dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time and welcome back as you may have noticed, we are uh, missing a few cast members tonight, and uh, we are kind of going towards the final bits of our adventure in Dementia. So tonight, we are looking back on the past a bit. Our current characters are safe for the moment within a house of lament, forgotten in a realm long forgotten. However, as you sit and rest a bit, to your memory comes one of the longest days and strangest nights you had on the seas on your way to Dementlia. The, the signs were, the signs were present as you were sailing that a storm was brewing. That was obvious. You had weathered one previously, one actually, uh, and helped some storm giants to in fact quell that storm, but this one was more natural, but no less dangerous. Mariah beat the crew to quarters, and um, you were beset by heavy winds, um, gargantuan waves. And while the crew took shifts trying to um, keep Pixie's fury from being capsized or taking on too much water. Some of you had the chance to rest, but every time you just felt yourself swaying constantly below in the berths, unable to tell which way's up, which way's down, the tumultuous sea giving you no level respite. However, at some point, the seas did indeed calm. And as you emerged and took a look about, it was not a good sight for the Fury. The main mast cracked nearly in half. You were forced to take down topsails and limp with just some mainsails and some other um, small bits to carry you forward. Um, Mariah told you all, with the help and uh, consulted with you, the bosun, Prion, and said, we need to make landfall and make repairs as soon as possible. And finding that there were indeed a small chain of islands nearby um, and a small merchant town, Mariah made a course that way. And you limped Pixie's fury slowly, cautiously into a small fishing village known as Uskarn. There, Mariah quickly began negotiations with some of the fisher people on just how they could find a proper replacement mast in such short time that you could be anything but marooned here for about a month. It was after some time of negotiation with the village leaders and stuff, Mariah returned and said, Well, fuck. They've got about one suitable tree in this fucking island. But they're going to need a favor. So 
and they're using it for a Christmas tree. So we're coming back tonight, and we're stealing Christmas. <laughs> oh, that would have been a way better adventure. Uh, oh my this, god! But, uh, but um, we'll like... save that for next holiday. Damn it's it, like Mariah's amazing. here. It's like she's here right now. <laughs> I can almost hear her. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's Mariah. <laughs> Pure poetry. <laughs> um, she brings with her a um, nervous-looking half-elven druid who comes on board and talks to the rest of you. He tells you that nearby is an enclave. A um, group of clerics and monks on a place called Firewatch Island. Only about maybe 600 feet by, uh, 600 feet across in total, but hosts, um, hosts some tall fjord-like mountains and, or, not fjord-like, but tall mountains jutting from the sea, and a large fortress built upon it. Um, he says that it's changed hands recently, but for the last five years, a colony of um, clerics of d various different faiths and monks have hosted it as sort of a um, place of peace where one can go to experience stillness of mind and get away from the... Um, travails and the, well, busyness of normal life. This is usually the first stop as travelers come and then go to that island. But recently they haven't been heard from. Usually a boat comes about every day to fetch supplies and the passengers that want to come along. But the island has been conspicuously silent for the past couple days. And again, wringing his lithe hands and um, looking up towards you, only making eye contact for the briefest of moments, this nervous half-elven druid asks that in exchange for their um, eldest tree on the island, whose time he acknowledges is coming to fall, regardless, would you go and investigate this place and see what's happened and if something has become of the people there help them if you can sure i think that yeah absolutely wait what, oh, what, one second wave i have wave right <laughs> yeah hey yeah. okay, wave this seems like a good opportunity to uh to uh, perhaps get some more some more followers, um, I think it would be worth our while to go and, and and help. They're already clerics, but perhaps you could convert them. I'm not yeah. optimistic. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely we'll come help. And uh, the um, half elf nods enthusiastically. Good. You can take one of our longboats, if you would like. I know yours is already uh, be beginning to undergo repairs. That's very kind of you. Do you by any chance have a, a, the deity that you worship? Have you heard the good word of, uh, of, of a persona by any chance or? Oh, well, persona looks after the fish and- I'm not a after fish. After the trees and oh, Eldath sorry. after the groves. They are all so, shepherds in a much grander pasture. I like to look at the entirety of the grass at once as the wind blows across it and as it blooms green each season. That, that's that's beautiful. Uh, we'll circle back around. But yeah, I, I didn't I didn't hear I didn't hear a, a no or a yes rather that you have someone that you follow. So um excuse me, what is your name? Um my name is Olian. Okay, uh, Olean, circle back. Okay, thank you so much. Mm, so you wouldn't know anything about any troubles that are happening up in this retreat of peace. 
just uh, just were they they generally come in on a regular basis and they haven't been. That's that's the only thing that you've noticed amiss, right? Yes. It could be as simple as well, their their craft sprung a leak and they didn't think they could make it all the way. In which case maybe one of you can help repair it and everything will be fine, but uh, could you take this crate of food as well? Just in case that I'm sure they have plenty of rations and they have gardens and such there, but just in case something's happened and he kind of gestures down towards a larger crate filled with um, some less perishable food items. Is this oh, guy yeah. naturally nervous or is there something something uh, as a naturally nervous us? person? <laughs> Feel free he's to make an insight check. Actually nervous. Inside um, seems to- not... totally normal to me. I don't yeah, know what I'm I, well. talking about. I, <laughs> I love I didn't it that, that Sean, weird. You, al- you always ask, what do I feel about this person? <laughs> it's, you're always asking the inside questions. <laughs> and I'm, the, and I'm, I'm like, the only one I'm the only one who's not. I mean, have... that's true, because I was about to say it, and that Melvin and I are just like taking it totally at face value. We're like, <laughs> sure, yeah. My, my passive 17. Yeah, not um, gonna help unless you roll. Your passive tells you he's nervous. I mean, you're getting the sense that you know you have a good read that this person is nervous, but anything deeper than that um, will require a roll. Okay. Nether's suspicious of everybody, but she's always That's like, "Oh, they're all right. They're That's okay." True. <laughs> I see. Brian, um, you n- look at where this half-elf is looking and you can see him looking down the sort of fjord down which this village sits and <laughs> you were muted and I'm still going to tell you shut up But <laughs> I, I, I didn't actually even make a sound I just <laughs> mouthed it very aggressively <laughs> and it looks like he's waiting for something to come as if he's expecting to see them he looks genuinely worried about the people there. That's what you garner from that. It's that when you know, you're expecting company and they're late and you keep looking out the window and wringing your hands. That's kind of this mental state that he is in. Okay. I'll pick up the food. You're supposed to start the game at six. Uh, do you mind if I <laughs> ask... Um, <laughs> uh, is the, the, the boat that you're going to let us borrow, is it um, relatively s- stable? Um... I'm not a very strong swimmer, you know. Melvin, we've talked about this. I'll just carry you. It should be fine. <laughs> um, it was just... It might smell a bit. It was just taken out by the, the fishermen this morning. Um, they had no issues with it. Oh, okay, that, that's good to know. Thank you. And they're big fishermen, right? Like, bigger than Melvin? Oh, all of our fishermen are bigger than him. That makes sense. Yeah. M- most See, people you don't are, have anything true. to you don't have anything to worry about. Okay. All right. Um, let's go check this out so that we can take their rotten tree. <laughs> it's a Charlie Brown Christmas. It's not so. It's not rotten. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you said it. You acknowledged it was coming to the end of its life, and I'm like. That sounds like a rotten tree to me. <laughs> no, ah, uh, well, that's not what was it's meant. It's the to last be tree in I the know, Kroger, it. like tree farm. It's the <laughs> threadbare. It's, it's the Charlie Brown Christmas tree. <laughs> exactly. Oh, gotcha. So, um. You are able to uh, take this boat and head out. They point you in a direction easy to navigate. Um, you can just barely see maybe the tips of the mountains emerging from um, Firewatch Island itself in the distance. And you row, row, row your boat off <laughs> into the afternoon. I would have been very disappointed had you not finished it. (laughs) I'm sure. Uh, I wonder why it's called Firewatch Island. Uh, Do you think maybe it's a literal 
thing, like that's where they used to watch for fire struggles? Uh, uh, maybe. I who, don't know, I'm just thinking out loud. <laughs> I mean, we're in the middle of I the ocean is, and it's a pretty I small thought, island. But this is banter. -er. Yeah, but, so I've been trying to get better at making small talk, Melvin. You're not making it easier for me. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot. Right. You should know you read my diary. Well, that's right. That's going back to Diary Gate. It just, <laughs> <laughs> just happened. It's been like a week or two, right? No, it's been on the ocean for a while. Okay. And in 17-year-old time, like, that happened yesterday. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this trespass has not been forgotten. Nor forgiven. Nor forgiven. Does there so, seem to be an obvious place to make port, DM? Yeah, yes. what do we see, DM? I'm, I'm, I, will, uh, I will tell you in oh, a few sentences <laughs> as um, you do see the sun making these waves kind of sparkle a bit across the waters as Firewatch Island comes into view. Three barren hills are its most noticeable landmarks, rising above narrow rocky beaches and small wiry shrubs on an otherwise sparse landscape. In between those high points, a small fortress and beacon tower can be seen. The building is made of stone and looks to have two floors. A bell tower rises an additional two stories above the rest of the building and a, lone, and a low stone wall surrounds part of the complex. There is a single pier that juts out into the water in an obvious small um, bay. There is a sanded beach that seems to be the only obvious place from this side of the island to dock. This would you would certainly assume this to be the main um, point of access to the island. Okay, we head that direction. Yep. And as you approach, you see it's in good shape. The um, wood pilings are raising a nice, very level, sturdy wooden dock um, a few feet off of the surf. Um, the area is deserted, however. Uh, no other boats or people are in sight as you begin to row in. You hear the call of gulls, shrieking of crows, and crashing of waves echoing across the water. Besides that, only silence. Can I send Dahl sort of ahead of the boat to just sort of go inland and make a about a 150 yard circle looking for signs of people or trouble? Sure, you can. Um, have Dahl make a perception check as you bring right, the boat I on to the pier, up to the pier. One moment. Sprite. All right, doll, what you got? Perception check, coming up. Um, come on now. Perception check. Nope. A 15. 15. Um, doll notices, um, coming up and around um, the conspicuous absence of any sort of activity. Um, there are gulls and crows, as said, and birds, shorebirds around. But based on, uh, she could see over the 30-foot uh, wall just a bit into the courtyard mm -hmm. of this fortress. But, or he could, uh, excuse me. They, but, they're... Oh, both. they, thank you. Um... And, but no animals of really any kind, uh, besides a couple birds that have flown in. Um, uh, they also notice them picking at, especially gulls and crows, picking at little bits of something on the beach and um, sort of on the grass and on the ramparts of this facility. Not, uh, um, nothing large, just little pieces, little morsels that some of the gulls have. Are they bits and pieces of body, or is this like somebody throwing a bunch of bread out? 
Um, uh, hard to tell at this point and from vantage. Uh, getting closer, maybe meat or just garbage. Kind of just looks like garbage, to be honest. All and right, I so didn't even consider sentence. that it might be bodies. <laughs> How long have you been playing D&D? Come on. I don't know. So, Couldn't it be candy? Not, no. Uh, so, uh, Beckon, um, doll back. And as they come back, um, my sight returns. And I say, ah, there's nobody around. I think something bad happened here. And I'm going to cast Armor of Agathus. Icy barrier shimmers across Nether's form. And... Um, I, I'd, I'd like to cast uh, Mage Armor, just in case. Mm. Um, so I'll be paper mache as a paper flies out of my spellbook and plasters itself all over my body. Just in case. Here it is again, oh. bodies. I send uh, ear luck up to have a look around while we head off in that direction. Okay. He gets a few um, flybys from some of the other gulls, kind of trying to shoo him off. But um, as you head up, or, or, so you're heading, dock the boat and heading into yeah. the island now. Again, gulls, crows picking at little, little pieces of things on the beach and on the island, um, digging around. Uh, and that's about all you see. Um, and you approach the um, fortress and you see there a tall, noble looking stone wall, well maintained um, with a open archway leading to an interior that seems to be a um, courtyard with some trees, gardens, and um, planters and whatnot. Um, you can see again the bell tower rising up um, about four stories and then the main building just behind this 30 foot wall stately and fortified. Uh, you notice that a lot of the windows look to be uh, narrow slits almost like a fortification um, or of a fort to a temple or a monastery. And um, as you approach, you the wind picks up, blowing across from the southern portion of this island. And you um, all smell something completely stomach-turning for a moment on the wind. Rot, festering decay, just assaults your senses and um, for a moment uh, then the wind turns and gone again. With Dahl's passive perception is uh, look at, not passive, but uh, perception check as uh, they continue to look around and kind of come back. Um, they kind of get curious and looking down at the ground, um, there's this little seagull pecking at a, a bit and kind of flies away and looks closer and and it comes back to you. Hey, um, that, 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 and pointing towards the ground, you see the seagull has about the um, one, just a joint's worth of a severed finger in its bill, and it flips it up and eats it, and then gives a cry and flies off. So how long is it that the people are two days? So it's not like something came and just killed them. They came and t tore them to pieces. Aye. As you are watching this gull fly up and kind of crest past the sun, suddenly the world goes dark for a moment as you are cast in shadow, which quickly passes. And then you hear a shrieking cry 
from the sky as a bird of enormous wingspan crests around the corner of one of these mountains, flying about, turning towards you. It's, it would be beautiful if it weren't quite so terrifying. It has enormous talons like you would expect from a bird of prey, from a raptor, red and blue feathers intermingled, but its head, despite a vicious beak, is crowned with antlers like a stag. This bird looks a combination of both hunter and hunted, and it swoops downward, oh. making trajectory directly towards <clears throat> all of you. Um, going to pull you over to our very large map here. Dot, Is it dot. possible for Sarayan to yell, Don't worry, Melvin, I'll protect you! And she kind of like you jumps in front of Melvin. <laughs> absolutely do that. Um, I yeah. to, um, <laughs> put a little red square right here for you all. And as <laughs> this creature begins to attack, this is not its actual size, but just as a um, point of reference for what it looks like. It looks like this. Ooh. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, it's awful. <laughs> Let's kill it. And it's huge. Oops, oh, sorry. gosh. Okay. Now it's even cooler. It's even scarier. <laughs> just need nether token in the box Ooh. and then we'll... Oh, sorry. What kind of face does it have? Is its face cute? I can't uh, tell. Let me... Uh, no, not really. <laughs> um... No. Okay. <laughs> That'll help. Yeah, it has. Uh, it looks oh. like. Is I've it just face displayed it in chat? Uh, like mammalian? Kind of, like almost Griffin-like, but yeah. the head is more like this weird toothy stag-like beak. Um, Interesting. Sort of com combination between some type of um, deer-like creature and, um, and you know, bird of prey. One of my favorite animals is a, a possum. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> like this is kind of, cause like, they can't help that they're ugly and people are so mean to them cause they're ugly. So I feel like this is a similar vibe for me. Uh, I love cool. this animal despite its ugliness. Thank you, Peter. Peter, <laughs> before needed that we get validation. into- <laughs> We're Peter, gonna roll initiative. Oh, I forgot to bring the tracker up. Um, I don't suppose I would have a chance to determine whether or not this is a monster or a beast. Um, so, uh, between, yes, between you and Melvin, um, quick talking, <laughs> yes, you could, you can make an arcana check. Can I make a nature check? Yeah, that'd be appropriate for determining if it's a beast, yeah. How is it possible that I roll with advantage for initiative and I rolled a three? So I've got a 16 on nature. <clears throat> because you're winning like that. 16. Um, Aww, this, feel like it. Um, uh, this creature, looking at it, the way it flies and even the way that its eyes track and something about it, the, the shadow underneath it, tends to sort of shift around strangely. And it doesn't cast a normal shadow. It casts a much smaller one that looks almost humanoid in a strange way. And you're like, this is not natural. This is not a creature of nature. This is most likely a monstrosity. Okay. And it rolled the highest initiative. So it will come forward and fly over all of you. And as it does about 20 feet in the air as it swoops down, it will choose closest three, Prion and Sarayan and Melvin, I need you all to make a wisdom saving throw. I think I'm incredibly wise. Is it against being charmed? No. 
It is anything but charming. <laughs> <laughs> natural 20. Ooh, pretty on side. <laughs> nice. Natural 20. Good, you all have made your wisdom saves. You look and you you get this uneasy feeling in your stomach as you look down and your shadow starts to almost make a glitch, like um, almost like your shadow's being cast upon water, even though it's solid ground. It, but I'm it undulates land. and waves around and then snaps back into its regular. Uh, form. And then it swoops down with its talons towards. Oh, Saran, you are so bright and. Uh, I had a feeling. Attack of attack of opportunity and miss. Gotcha. <laughs> uh, oh, Saran, I have a Thanks 22 to hit you with talons for 16 points of slashing damage. Ow, I think it's way less cute now. And it will fly up 40 more feet and to here. Does no one else get an attack of opportunity? They do not. It did come within five <coughs> feet, but it has the flyby feature. Oh. Nether, it is your turn. All right. Nether is going to move to the other side of Prion here and it's going to shoot the creature with a couple of Eldritch Blasts. There it goes, one. Hitting AC 16. 16 hits. <laughs> Three points of force damage. The second one comes, hits AC 23. Uh-huh. Doing 10 points of Ooh, force damage. Big blast. damage. And then um, Dahl is going to shoot it with a, it's got a sort of um, fly over to the side here um, sort of flying down close to the ground mm -hmm. um, and uh, whirl about and shoot at it with their bow Just be careful that Doll's in range uh, Doll's short bow has a range of ooh, 40 feet 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 40, look at that well done Calculated. Uh, hitting AC 19. Hits. Does one point of damage and needs to make a constitution saving throw. That's not the correct save. It's now using my spell attack save. Oh, look at that. <sighs> Do you see what? 15. It succeeds. Did it choose to succeed? Uh, it it just, uh, you see that arrow sink awfully deep, but it just kind of <laughs> shakes it off and continues. Got it. All right. Anything else? No, that's it. After your turn, it hit, it looks at you after those four bits of force come jolting at it. It turns and it dive bombs you. No. And it will make a um, gore attack with its beak. Gorge. 19. Uh, that's the hit. 12 plus another... So 19 points of damage as its beak comes and bites down and twists into your flesh, but I know it, it will also takes, take damage. Takes uh, damage from Agathis, armor of Agathis. I think we're up to 10, 10 points of cold right. damage. Gotcha, so it takes 10. All right, and it's now Melvin's turn. Uh, okay. Um, well, seeing it, it fly by again, I'm going to um, uh, uh, lash out at it with a uh, inky whip, uh, Tasha's mind whip. Um, so I'll need a uh, intelligence saving throw, DC 15, please. <laughs> Look at you. I have a 11 and uh, yeah, I have an 11. All right. Um, so that that's a failure. Um, and it's going to take uh, eight points of psychic damage. And then it can't take reactions till the end of its next turn. And on its next turn, it must choose movement action or bonus action and only gets one of those. Okay, so you can see it flopping around. It's still flying, keeping itself just five feet off the ground, but it seems to be shaking its head around, trying to um, dispel whatever um, is going on here. 
So there's a there's an inky tether wrapped around its foot at the moment. Ooh, okay. And you are oh I just have a five feet reach, otherwise it would um not like you. But it's a little bit still focused. Uh, at the end of its turn, it's going to use its final legendary action to attack. Nether again, with its talons, just reaching out to rake across you. AC 16. That's a hit. For uh, 22 points of slashing damage. <laughs> wow. Uh, Nether screams in agony and begins to bleed all over the place as... Uh, most of her neck has been ripped away from her body. Brian, Remember that I have the aura of protection for anyone within twin, 10 feet of me. It doesn't is help she, me with a Is she a down? She's I'm just saying, just digits. generally. Oh, just wow. generally. Uh, Eolac flies in. Sorry. And I throw the hooked net. Wait. Sorry. Does that have a um, nope. size? Uh, um, size. Uh, uh, doesn't say anything about size on there. Let's see. Um, okay. Uh, that looks to be a hit. Uh, a net has no effect on creatures that are formless or creatures that are huge or larger. It's uh -huh. in the net. Um, uh, you would know that Prion too, down. so it's, yeah. Uh, Again, the creature is about, is much larger than your net. It would be like, yeah, I'm throwing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I would have done that with a, a trident then. Yep, that's fine. Feel free to use that same roll if you want. There. For 15, 8 slashing, uh, 8 piercing, 7 thunder. Okay. And um, then I attack it. Uh, I've just, obviously, I, I've already hit it with the top one, so I'll just roll the damage again. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, 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 for 10 damage. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. And that's it. I, I then, I... Can I move um, Nether out of the way? I got it. Uh, can I retroactively use my reaction DM after I took that damage to use Misty Escape? I also have an action, a reaction I would like to ask about. I've just never used one before, so I don't know sure. how it works. We're, we've been away for a bit, so yeah, um, this, right. yeah, first we'll, we'll trigger uh, Nether's second just in case uh, the Paladins is uh, Oh, got it, right. So... What were you, what reaction were you looking to use? Oh, I have a nifty uh, one that is the boop up um, divine allegiance, and as long as another like is the sound of that. Oh, oh what? I don't like the sound of that. You don't. Oh no, you're too far away from me. Anyway, it would be cool though, because any creature that is within um, beep boop up back to the page. Uh, when a creature within five feet of me takes damage, I can use my reaction to take the yeah, damage. Yeah, you myself. just haven't had time to maneuver right next to Nether. So exactly. Um, yeah. In that case, in I that will case... use Misty Escape, and I'm going to teleport to there, and I'm invisible until the start of my next turn. Okay. Or until I attack or cast a spell. Sarayan, your allies are somehow always faster than you, um, and they've jumped into <laughs> combat, so and this creature you. has raked its claws and its beak <coughs> into nether um, and you see just a little pile of blood where she used to be before poofing out go? of existence for a moment she's dead oh god she was eaten oh god oh no <laughs> she was so small uh, so how high up is this creature 40 feet is that what she said 40 feet above us yeah. Nice. Oh no no it's nice. it's now five. It had to get within five to um attack. So. Ah fool. Okay, so what I would like to do is first as I had jumped in front of Melvin saying, I'll protect you, I would like to use my bonus action to cast Shield of Faith on Melvin, and so I will do that. Expending one first level spell slot. Cute. 
Um, and so plus two to your AC, Melvin, as long as I don't get Back. distracted. <laughs> um, and <laughs> which is probably not going to be long. So enjoy what you can. Um, <laughs> and then I will, because this person thing bird is right in front of us now, I'm going to take some of my movement to move up towards it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hit it with wave. My best friend, wave. Wave at it. <laughs> wave at it. Uh, That's 24 a big one. to hit. Nifty, thrifty. Um, and I'm also going to then uh, do some divine smiting, if that's possible. Heck yeah. Um, dope. So I'm going to divine smite it. Fool. Ha ha. Uh, -bop -boop -beep -boop -bop -beep. Bear with me while I figure out how this character shoot works again. Uh, ah, beans. All right, so I click. Which so level did I you just, smite? Do I get to pick for as like many levels as I have available yep. to me? Yep. Okay. For pick then, which spell slot, and it you it know increases damage beyond first. So I have a question for you, actually. Do so you? I have, I do, <laughs> or for anyone who can answer the question. So I have third and fourth level <laughs> spells. But those are inherent to my uh, race in class. And so do those then count as expendable spell slots? No. So only the ones that I have the spell slots. Yeah. So you to. have three second level slots yeah. and four that's first level the, slots. That's the highest. Yeah. So I'm going to use one of my second level spell slots then. Okay. Uh, so roll 3d8 or click the 1d8 and the 2d8 if, you, if that's easier. Let's do 3d8. That's 11. 11 extra points of damage 11 as extra points wave of damage. shimmers with brilliance. Yes, and <laughs> I can extra attack. <laughs> so I'm going to do it again. Go for it. Okie doke. Let's see. Jubilee boop boop bop. Uh, bop. That's a 16. 16 a hit. <laughs> this creature is not wearing armor. It is a natural creature, though... Oh, warped makes, by perhaps evil magics. That makes me feel kind of bad. Um, and then can I... mean, it, I, it wants to eat you. It nearly so. ate me. <laughs> okay, you're right. I feel less bad. <laughs> um, and I'm going to do another Divide and Smite if that's a possibility. Just feels really OP. I just don't know if it's... Go for it. Oh, sure. That's okay. it's your class feature. Dang, that's crazy. No wonder people like playing Paladin. Wow. That's All right. And then level. that's a good first level smite right there. The, I'm going to do it at second level, though. So I'm going to do one more. So 17. Wow. OK. Another three. It is bloodied, looking terrible. And it ugh, looks kind of around um, at all of you and it looks like it's going to reach out its talons to bite and its beak to bite, but um, then it just starts beating its wings faster and starts to um, ascend. Is it so it can only take an action or move is what the thing is? Uh, yeah, it can move action or bonus <clears throat> action, but only one of those. Understood. And no reactions till the end of its turn. It is going to fly, try to fly up. It takes 10 damage from Thunder. And away. All right. And do I get attack of opportunity? Um, its movement does not provoke attacks of opportunity. I've got Sentinel, so... But it is... What's the, the, the sentinel it's, feature ignores it, anything, disengage action, but it doesn't dis ignore flyby, does it? I don't know. So what in sentinel makes you think that um, you would be able to attack? It says in there that where usually you wouldn't get an attack of opportunity. So uh, per Jeremy Crawford, a f creature with flyby does not provoke attacks of opportunity, and nothing in sentinel counters that directly. Okay. 
Because <laughs> I think it just counters the disengage action, which this one doesn't need to, as it has the flyby feature. And it flies... Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Up about 50 feet, and then over to here, as it looks to be headed in that direction. Nether! It is bleeding, limping, just like one of its wings is barely working as it um, Given what happened the last time that I hit it, I think I'm going to uh, refrain from hitting it. Um, and I'm going to uh, use my action to drink my potion of greater healing. Okay. As you become visible. <clears throat> yes, indeed. Um, Any action for Dahl? Yeah, uh, Dahl's going to shoot it. Okay. Toink. Hitting AC 20. <laughs> Kadoink hits. <laughs> One point of damage, and I need a constitution saving throw. I rolled a natural 20 for that one. Ah, all right, then it's saved. Um, and let's see, now a greater potion of healing is 3d8 plus... What is it? No, 3d4 plus 4. 3d4 plus 4. That's what I thought. I always forget what was I thinking. I don't know why. What was I, I thinking? You're thinking cure wounds. I know. I was thinking that. Okay. Uh, feel free to move if you would like. Otherwise, yep. it is. I'm going to run turn. away. Uh, uh, are, we, are we letting this one go? No? Okay. 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 Oh. Um, okay. I'm gonna, uh, I'll. I'll uh, Good uh, yes, it was. Oh, wow, thank yeah. God. Um, I'm gonna uh, cast a uh, radiant fireball in its direction. Oh God! Um, okay. God. So that'll be a uh, dexterity save DC 15. Oops. Uh, it's a giant gonna, sunburst. It's gonna explodes. succeed. Okay. Um, then it'll take half that. So uh, 13. Yeah, thir 13 uh, radiant damage. It is looking... Uh, you, you don't know how it's still flying, is what I will say about it. Feel free to do any movement, otherwise it's Prion's turn. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll step here, just in case. Made the mistake of eating food right before his turn. Uh, I... These turn trackers are shorter than before with only a couple <clears throat> players. <No. laughs> I move within range and throw Javelin there. Earlap comes in. Okay. I think Javelin range is 30, right? So you'll be at a straight roll? Um, it's 30, yeah. But if I can get close enough to throw... Oh, is it above thingy anyway? Is it 40 feet in the air? I believe is what I oh, said. Okay, fifteen. Fifteen hits. But eight damage. Eight. You see, I. All right, I will let you describe this, um, Jade, as that eight damage is enough to bring it down, as it is oh, really? trying to crest up over the wall, and you just run forward like an Olympic um, well, honestly, javelin thrower. <laughs> and cause the creature to breathe its last breath. Oh. Looks like we're eating well tonight. Oh. I go and collect my javelin. And I go and collect my chunk of flesh that I cook out of my body. against the wall before falling to the ground and then just laying there. This reminds me of why I can't play the game Monster Hunter. <laughs> it makes me too sad. <laughs> also, I gotta say, the mechanics in that game are just like animal abuse. You have to attack every creature about 10,000 times <laughs> before horrible. anything happens. It's ter I can't even watch people <laughs> play it because it bums me out so much. Oh. It looks anyway. too much like an animal. It looks too much like a friend. <laughs> Doll goes over and sort of spin circles around it, and while while they're doing that, um, Nether takes some deep breaths. And can I make a nature check? Does the damage that I see that's been done 
the bits and pieces that are around, are they like what remains of people who have been eaten? The, the uh, dam was the damage no, caused by this sure. person? Go ahead and make that nature check. All right. Ooh, natural 20 for 25. That's awesome. So nice. two things we'll get from that natural 20. First of all, a large creature like this, you would expect to see large pieces of humans splayed about if it was something like this that attracted it. Um, the breeze comes through again and you smell it. Horrid scent of carrion and decay um, being carried across the breeze. And um, part of you thinks, no, that these teratons, this is a teratin, or a periton, as it's called, um, a much larger one than has ever been cataloged, to your knowledge. And a one of dire um, size, perhaps? Uh, monstrous, is what, what one might say if they were to put it upon a website. Um, <laughs> and it... Uh, <laughs> You know that these things, 25, natural 20, is awesome. Um, they tend to um, eat specifically the hearts of humanoids. Um, yeah. That's their favorite thing to eat. And in fact, it's their way that they reproduce. Um, a female periton needs to um, basically consume the heart from a live humanoid to be able to um, bring an egg to gestation. Um, Yuck. And wow. it's possible that the scent of death and decay brought it here. Um, it looks um, like it, it, it looked a little bit emaciated, like it hasn't been feeding heavily, but it's more on the hunt. Is this the male or female? Uh, this one was a male, but it was hungry nonetheless. Um, and you think that uh, whatever happened here little bits of flesh and now you're finding cloth and pieces of clothes um, you find a shoe laying in the grass like Just people exploded um, that's not the case um, no. <clears throat> can I harvest this thing there's uh. not time Brian. let's figure out what's going on here the, the threat's not over okay. there, may, there might be more of them it's true which, uh, this that was that was a harrowing fight, but there's there's something else here. Something else did all this. And until we take care of whatever that is, I don't think we should be spending time in the open like this. Okay. Well, um, I'll head up to the door. Uh, there is a door here. Yeah. It doesn't look it, but yes, there's an open archway there. Uh, and looking in, you can see. Um... <laughs> courtyard I described stairways leading up to the battlements uh, polygon reveal here to reveal the corner of the, the curve of the tower there you go there's a front door leading in here Uh, there's there are vegetable gardens and a small orchard of what look to be stunted apple trees. Stairs to the east and west lead up to the walkways overlooking the yard to the southwest. The base of the bell tower is obscured by thick, thick growths of vines, which also shroud, um, partially shroud the western stairs. And a set of double doors stands along the front of the hermitage on the far side of the garden and appears to be the only way inside um and you also see there is a small passage leading around the side it looks like originally as it was built it was built into the hill on both sides but you can see there's been a passageway kind of hewn through the rock into an area over here as well uh, is the smell getting worse um yes uh, I'm, I'm going to reach into my uh, uh, my handy spice pouch, and I'm actually going to pull out some peppermint, um, some mint, and I'm, I'm going to uh, take a cloth and, and crush the peppermint inside it and, and use that to help mask that stench a little. 
okay. for myself. Rayan notices this. Do, do you have any more? It smells oh, so oh, bad. Sure. Um, and I'll, I'll get another pinch of, of mint out for you. Thank you. Honestly, it's not that bad. Have you ever smelled rotten fish? No. Fish are alive where I'm from. I, 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 that's true. I try to avoid the water, you know. I listen yes. at this door. <clears throat> All right, make a perception check. 17. Good. Um, you hear absolute silence on the other side of the door. You hear a bit of rustling coming from the vines to the southwest. I'll uh, sneak up to the corner and have a look around. Okay. Looking at them, um, thick vines uh, that um, are growing from large sir, uh um, ceramic pots actually placed at the base of the tower as they wind their way up you see that um, in certain places where the vine attaches itself to the building it kind of stops and just drapes its way over like it's hung halfway and then the rest of it um, just drapes towards the ground and you see almost like a um, like a uh, I guess a whisper or a tail or tentacle the vine just kind of twitches a little bit as you're looking at it. Does it look like it's... Obviously, it doesn't look like it belongs here. Uh, you can make a nature check to determine more about it, but right now, it's like those vines just twitched a little. 17. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, you actually think that these are very sort of overgrown assassin vines. Uh, why someone would be cultivating them, you don't know, but these vines are carnivorous. Hmm. They look You also notice, though, that they are bearing fruit, what look to be large, plump, juicy grapes. Larger than your fist. Do I, do I know how old they are to be this big? Um, you, they look mature, but beyond that, 17, not, not so much. Uh, it's usually they're found wild in jungles, so you don't have any experience with cultivated, um, no. assassin vines. Okay, I'll come back. Relay that information. I'll have a quick look down this end and look around the corner. Um, if Prion shares about the the uh, the vines, I'd I'd like to see what I know about uh, assassin vines and how they bear fruit and whether their fruit is safe to eat. Uh, sure. Uh, you can make your own nature check. <laughs> Prion, this is what you see. I, um, I don't past... know. <laughs> yeah, no, you you not not about With this subject. natural one. Um, um, you, botany was never your um, no. favorite subject. Uh, from this angle, you see another small tower. Um, there looks to be an entrance at the bottom and maybe a um, round room on the second floor above it and past it, a few more trees and what looks to be a wall that is still under construction. It's only about three feet high, though the way it's built, the stonework resembles the main wall on the outside, and it's likely that this was intended to be built much higher at some point. Okay. Um, Looking... Sorry, go on, Sean. Can I use Mage Hand to try and pick one of these grapes? <laughs> um... Yeah. Um... As so you cast Nether it. reaches down and pulls up uh, a sort of a globule of water from the from the ground and sends it out. And as it heads towards the vines, it takes on the form of a hand. Okay, the the vines sort of tremble a little bit, but don't move. Get closer and um, take an, um, 
plucks off a large grape and you can see what some of these the where the vines are hanging off they kind of whoosh, wave around for a second and zip about kind of all around the grape as if trying to find the arm connected to the hand that plucked it but as but it's instinctual there's no intelligence there and they once they do not find prey they kind of recede back into their inert uh, waiting stalking state now may I make a nature check to determine why somebody I mean are these is this the natural state of these creatures are they being cultivated specifically for these grapes or did something sure. change did something turn the the the, uh, the vineyard into something bizarre uh go ahead all right I have rolled a 23. Wow, Nether's on top of it with the nature. Uh, well, with actually, the way these, they're... <laughs> the way these pots are placed, um, and even, oddly enough, the vines are, for lack of a better word, well-behaved. If a normal assassin vine you think would be spreading all out over these gnarled trees and cleverly winding their way up the stone so that they could just maybe sneak a grasp at the ankle of someone ascending these stairs or something like that. But you look at them and you're like, you would have to walk up and walk directly into them to be caught by them. And they're going straight up that tower in a way that made it pretty obvious to spot them. Um, they are the the worst assassin vines you've seen if, they're, if their intent is to actually terrible, catch Terrible, just prey. terrible. You should so, be ashamed. Um, cultivated, you would think so. Though your mind kind of oscillates between, is, would it, are they cultivated or domesticated, <laughs> or both? What you know, it's strange. Uh, yeah, right. Okay. Um, and this grape, as it sort of comes back towards me, uh -huh. it appears to just be a, just a big old grape. Oh yes, uh, this almost black in its color with a um, dusty-like exterior, but um, firm and supple. Hmm. Sort of look at everyone around and sort of start messing around with them. I want to get one of the seeds if I can. Maybe a few of them. Okay. Yeah. We plunge in, and the um, it almost bursts with juice, um, which is mostly clear, and then uh, um, find a couple seeds inside. Great. I take the seeds and hand the grape to um, uh, <laughs> boy it's Who been a while Pingu assassin vine grape too oh uh, M Melvin Melvin Jesus want a <laughs> grape uh, is, is it safe to eat I've never seen one of these before um, would my nature check have told me whether or not this Heather, is poison you, you think so actually the, the danger of the um Assassin vine isn't its fruit. Uh, the fruit and is indeed a um, baiting mechanism. Should, should be fine. And, and it's it's not like made of p p people or something. Would that make a difference, Melvin? Uh, yeah, kind of. I suppose so. Enjoy. Um, how many should seeds did I get? Dim. Uh, four seeds. Four seeds. All right. Thank you. Um, I want to check the ground to see how trodden this path is. Yeah, go ahead and make a um, survival check. Natural 20. 27. Wow. You see many humanoid feet, some booted, some barefoot, um, going back and forth from here. You also see what look to be... Um, the tracks of large objects being dragged across the ground. Um, they come from here and lead towards the archway. Mm -hmm. Some of them. Others um, lead back here and just to, uh, to the building itself. Anything being dragged um, leads either into this door or away from here. There are bare feet and booted feet going out the archway and coming from the archway um, out into the regular um, sort of outer area of the island. 
Anything more recent? Those are in the last, um, in the last day or two. Okay. All of it, yeah. I'll go back to the group and relay the information. <clears throat> so, which way are we Brianna going? We've seen booted feet and bare feet going out from the complex and some in. Uh, so, so these feet are like look like they were walking and just got like dusted or something or are they like on their side the boots no sorry he's tracks tracks of oh, track. bare feet and booted that makes feet so much more sense okay thank you <laughs> clarification I literally i literally was like are these feet attached from no, their body just a bunch of feet laying around <laughs> that's, that's what i thought you were saying oh god there's bare feet i was feet. imagining like and then like feet. a bare foot yeah exactly <laughs> You see some tracks coming, some tracks going. <laughs> With a 27 uh, <laughs> arrival, he saw everything there was to see about those tracks. Yeah. I'm so glad I wasn't exactly. the only one who thought that. Okay. <laughs> I'll open the door. It's a horror All campaign, right. Peter. Brian, what do you, you want? Tr you try and mm -mm, you, you hit some resistance. You, you push and it seems like uh, there's something heavy behind it or the, uh, the door won't open normally, even though the latch opens fine. It's not locked, but... Um, it is resisting your attempt at entry. Can I try to use my shoulder? Is that a yeah, it's trying. question for me? Yeah, yeah. Can okay. I try yeah, and... make a okay. Make a uh, athletics check. Fourteen. You ram in and you hear cracking of wood and stuff but ah your shoulder hurts it doesn't quite break open it's definitely barricaded on the inside okay round aside it is then um I, I i could try to open the door if you want sure what would you do in there melvin uh, it, it's a it's a spell. I mean, you've seen it before. It's a thunder wave, you know. You're not gonna just run into it the way Preon did. Oh no! No, I, run I, into it. Run into it. Preon's much stronger than I am, so I, I doubt that no. would work. No, no, you should yeah. try it. Well, it's a natural uh, twenty. He puts Preon aside. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, you I, just gotta. I, boink, you gotta I'm gonna right uh, grab my spell book, open it up, and then slam it closed in front of me. Um, casting Thunder Wave, uh, dealing 10 points of thunder damage to the door in a 10 foot cube in front of me. Okay. Um, Do with that door. Knock, knock. <laughs> it also makes uh, a sound out to 300 feet. You hear, uh, yeah, that um, thunder rings out, and then you hear what sounds like most of the wood behind it being scattered across the floor and um, ricocheting within the room. And then one of the doors kind of falls off its hinge and it's just sort of laying um, almost separated from its uh, joining. I was a bit excessive. See inside a dark room. Uh, I'm gonna stick my head in and, and say, uh, special delivery. Um, you're again. You're met by a awful smell. Um, this one a little bit different. Um, this smells like dirty canal, um, or uh, in a, a large city, or um, swampy more. Uh, yeah, or a uh, being nearby a latrine. You notice that inside the room there are arrow slits, three on each side. The ones on. Your right-hand side, or I sh guess I should say, the ones on the western side are bricked up. On the left, it, the view is almost completely obscured within, beyond a few feet by an immense amount of cobwebs. DM, could a tiny creature make it into in through one of these um, arrow slits? Uh, the ones on the right... Or on the east side, potentially Either. yes. Oh, so not on the not on the west side. They are bricked up on bricked the up. west. Right. So doll is going to go to the side and sort of crawl in to look. Okay, 
Let's see what's on the other side of it. Many, many webs. Um, as she, as, uh, as they crawl in, um, can see just past, uh, looks to be a ladder in the corner. Um, Dahl thinks it's going to be difficult getting through those webs, though. Um, yeah, and Dahl, can't Dahl, see Dahl, what spiders made them, but that's, it might feel just small enough that that's a little worrisome. Where webs are, there are often spiders. Dahl is going to look very carefully to see if there's any spiders who've made these webs. Uh, make, make a perception check. Dahl has rolled a five. We're fine. None that, uh, none that Dahl sees. All right, Dahl's going to hang out there. I'll open this door. Okay. You throw it open and reveal the main room of this facility. There are um, stairs leading up to a mezzanine level. The vaulted stone chamber. Impressive. Um, the balcony stands 10 feet off the floor with heavy cross beams above reinforcing the 20 foot high slate tiled ceiling. Here and there missing ceiling tiles have been covered over with thatch. A large rusty metal tub and a broken wooden frame stand near the staircase. The floor shows spatters of blood and obvious signs of recent combat. No bodies or anything. <clears throat> no bodies. I ain't got no body. Any uh, loose weapons laying around? Um, yeah, make an investigation check as you guys are looking around. Oh, God. Seven. Um, Prion, uh, a couple uh. <laughs> maces and, um, Sort of simple weapons, some daggers, a spear. It's more so that obviously like that. battle took place here, so he's looking to see the bodies have obviously been dragged off. Is it just red blood, yeah? Yes. I'm just going to... Can I hear anything going on? Uh, yeah, make a perception check, uh, but for now it's... At... at Oh, I could hear this. Start. It's just your allies. Looking for and, this, yeah. where this fly is. Doll, um, is being particularly loud right now. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to take a look around as I come into the room, if that's all right. Mm -hmm. A paladin is bringing up the rear. Liz! Sorry, I, I forget to move my token. I'm just in theater of the mind. I'll move my token. <laughs> Oh, that's fine. Uh, Melvin, you're looking around with a uh, 14? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you look around the floor. Um, you know that these blood spatters can't be more than, much more than a day old. Um, and looking... Uh, looking around is obviously many people were killed here. You find bits of fabric and based on the number of weapons and such um, many, many people were likely killed in this room within a day or so. You also oh. find looking oh, no. about um, one footstep um, you don't really know where it goes or what happened up later but um, it looks like a, f a fresher stamp in the blood, like someone stepped on the blood when it was sticky and um, continued on uh, within the last couple hours. And, and which direction does it look like that footstep is going in? That you'll need to help with a survival check. Um, right now, you just notice that. <clears throat> print uh, I'll, I'll point in that the out blood. to, to Prion. Uh, Prion, uh, mm. look, there's a, this one is more recent than the others. Do you think you can figure out where it went? I'll have a look. Sixteen. Mm, okay. Um, you see, it's it's strange. You see this print, um, Prion, and you kind of look around and see a single left foot 
moving as if someone stepped in this blood, hopped a couple steps, leaned against the wall and took off a boot. And then you see one booted and one barefoot track leading into the door here. Does it look like the, the smears of blood look like bodies were moved? Like it's weird to have all this blood and no bodies. Yes. Does it look like? Yeah. Okay. So, the, the, is there like a a trail to where the, the, all the bodies would have been pulled? Um. As you guys are conferring about that with Prion's check, um, Prion, you're looking at it. You're you had an astronomical survival check before. As you look at the blood in this room, um, it's looks like they lay dead for at least some time and then most of them are they were dragged either out the front here or um some into this room and some out this door as well i'll open this door uh the one you're by right now Mm -hmm. reveals a kitchen um Shows signs of recent use and for the most part is surprisingly clean. Um, there are shelves and cupboards for holding utensils and dishes and such. Is that another door opposite you? Yeah. Yep. I will head over and open it. <clears throat> this seems to be the scullery, the storage room. And this is where the set of footsteps leads. You see that there are some bodies perhaps dragged out this way but the fresher footsteps do head into this room and sort of over to the fireplace here can I hear anyone in there Prion um, as you guys come in um, make a perception check 30 20 oh 21 um you hear faintest whispers. I'll walk in Coming with my weapon up. Weapon up and just walk in. And you step into the fireplace and there's a stone wall on the backside. Oh, sorry. You follow the tracks you can follow to the fireplace, and then as you get there, it just ends in a stone wall. Um, I stand here and look behind this bookshelf, whatever it is, so I can see down both ways. Okay. Um, yeah, you're looking around. Um, the, the, the steps end here. They don't exit again. Um, I, I heard whispering near right? the uh, potato sacks or the uh, some like potato storage things here. The whispering I heard was it common? Yeah, you couldn't tell. It was just whispering, oh. and it did seem to be coming from yeah that same place near the fireplace over here. <coughs> Tall's gonna fly over. Um, now there's gonna actually first I'll confer with Prion to find out what's going on. I can hear voices around here. Down by the fireplace. Probably some sort of a door or something that we can't see. Right. Should oh. I have Doll have a look or Melvin? Sh- sure, I can take a look around. Uh, wait, where are you? Where are you hearing it, uh, Prion? On the other side of this wall. Okay. Um, I'll take a look around and see what I can find. Anyone is welcome to make an investigation check to search around. I'm not mm-hmm. any good at investigating. They're not any crates that look like they're full try. of... Not any crates that look like they're full of dirt, right, Peter? <laughs> no. Okay, good. You're welcome to try, Sarayan. Go ahead. I've got a Sarayan, not to be outdone by Melvin... Um, will follow suit and kind of like shove him out of the way. Like, excuse me very much. And please, please, please go ahead, take a look. Thank you, I will. And uh, <laughs> begins investigating. <laughs> <laughs> Nether kind of leans over to Priyan. 
Do you detect a bit of tension between them? Hi. Nothing, nothing to see here. <clears throat> I rolled. To see a, here. I rolled a seventeen, Peter. Very nice. Um, you notice seeing that the window, that the light coming through these windows is starting to dim more as the sun is beginning to set. It's getting later at night, and you hear more um, panicked whispers as you find um, a one of the. Um, you notice where the steps stopped. One of these wooden um, shelves seems to be fake and you can turn up the shelves and push in and sure enough it slides out of place where you can just shimmy through and you see a ladder leading down to a basement and you hear a more uh, frantic m murmuring and then a sh 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 whisper If I were a really cruel person, I would say they were coming to finish the job, but I'm not, so I won't. But Is there anyone somebody... down there from this monastery? Or wherever we are. Can you hear? What? What? Who are you? We've been sent to investigate the place. What happened here? Oh. And you hear... <coughs> Can't you see? They're all dead. Oh no. All... There's no bodies here. And well, um, except for the bits and pieces of the ones outside. Um uh, and you hear this a uh, third voice say Lordy hell, can't you remember she went up and checked they're not there? And you just hear a coughing, um, individual coughing, and slowly enough emerging from um, a cellar down at the bottom are three humanoids, and I'll put their um, tokens in the kitchen here with you. One appears to be a um, is a human woman wearing um, some, some armor, but looks to be um, a cleric. She is holding a man who is coughing and looks incredibly ill. Um, and then next to them, coughing a bit, but uh, looking not too terribly sick, is a um, hearty dwarf. And they come up and say, <clears throat> God, it's almost dark already. <coughs> what happened here? <sighs> Um, the cleric will begin to tell you, um, she was reading books in their library when she saw a vision of tumultuous waves and skeletal hands reaching out from them. She had the sense of danger given to her directly from Valkyr, her, um, her deity. She heard whispers in her mind that something could help down in the cellar, and also that they had very little time. Um, she pulled the two of them, the, the, um, the two that she has with her, because they were the only ones immediately around down there as quickly as she could. Um, and as she was doing so, she saw the door to the kitchen fling open, and I saw a corpse dripping wet, shriveled, discolored as if by long immersion in the sea, stalked into the room and began to search, so I sealed the door, and miraculously it, it missed our hiding place, though it kept scrabbling, scraping at the floor as if it could sense us below. But as, as the glow of dawn shone, the cleft in a wall down there, and she kind of gestures down, and you can see the last bits of the sunset. There is a small crack in the wall in the cellar there. As, as the dawn showed, and they, they all fled. They overran us, just walked out of the sea, killed everyone. Are you saying there's no one left? And she kind of walks past you and looks into the room and says, but I don't 
How many Who's were that? there? How many of you were there? Who are at least three score. And the creatures came at night? I, middle of it. How many? How long do we have before sunset? Sunset is be an hour, 30 minutes, more likely. Hmm. We, we have to be ready. They'll, I'm sure they'll come. Ugh. And she smells that same scent that all of you had been smelling too. What if they come again? Do you think? Well, let's look for other survivors first, shall we? Well, this one, uh, she gestures um, towards uh, the man. Um, uh, Barrett, he can't, he can't move. He's, he's very, very sick. And you can see him too. His face is drained of almost all of its blood. And he um, is kind of slumps against a crate in the corner of the room and his eyes are almost rolling back. He's barely conscious. Well, you have two choices. You either stay down where you were or you head out to the boat. And if we don't find any more survivors, you leave without us. Uh, it's Saran, do you think you can help this this man? Yes! I'm going to gesture to the sick one. Yes, yes. I, I, I'd be more than happy to help. And uh, Saran will rush towards the sickly man. Um, they're already oh, very he'll... close. So <laughs> she... He's a servant of Volker. It doesn't matter, because he's also a, a, he's he looks human, right? You will hear Wave say, um, <clears throat> "Is he indeed a servant of Volker?" <laughs> okay, okay, so. Uh, but, but, I thought that because humans are inherently ask weaker him than if Tritons. he's a servant of Volker. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, sir, are are you by chance a servant of Volker? And you can see his eyes, um, kind of uh, rolling back in his head, and he looks at you, and kind of in confusion, and you, um. Reese kind of um, puts a hand on your shoulder. What does it matter? He, this is. We were teaching him the ways of of many, but he he did take interest in Volker. With all due hear... respect, Wave. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm gonna help this man. And Sarayan, uh channels some divine energy of persona, and I will expend fifteen points of play on hands. I think you only need to do five to cure a disease. I'm yeah. gonna do but, 15. No, I'll do the ow. bare minimum. I'm gonna do five. Okay. <laughs> the same. Uh, and he <coughs> takes in an uh, um, enormous breath. <gasps> and you, there are actually sort of boils on his face, too. I forgot to mention, too. He looks awful, but as you touch him, and he, <gasps> you can see relief as if his entire existence had just been a cloud of pain for some time, and he breathes a little easier, looks up to you and says, Thank you. Thank you. Course, and he just it, kind it of is... then leans his head against the wall and closes his eyes. I'll circle back to this, but it's by Persona's Grace, that you were healed. <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of then backs away slowly <laughs> and then whispers over her shoulder, I did the best I could, Wave. Just give me, let me do it in my own time. It is silent behind you. Just quickly. Oh, beans. <laughs> <laughs> Massive thank you to Blue Box RPG for 10,000 bits. Jesus. Oh, my goodness. Can't stay, but love for my LS, uh, LFS friends. One of the best D&D &D streams you on Twitch. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, John. So I hope you guys are doing all right. Thank you very, very um, much. Got a bunch please, of sickies um, over here. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, feel free to uh, 10,000. And we had a hype train before, didn't we? 
Mm. Yeah, I got level to level one. two. No, uh, level one. Yeah, we were yeah. moving towards level two. Level one. Gotcha. Understood. Um, please, crew, take inspiration for all of your characters. Um, Yay! We might not die. You. I'm feeling inspired by the grace of Persona. <laughs> Right. Should we try to barricade the door again? We've oh, got a table did you, or two here. The uh, did you see Aaron? Um, the woman's the female cleric says. I, I, for, I we, he was with here with us too. He left just a couple hours ago to 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 go and look around the island after it sounded like things had gotten quiet. Have you seen him? No, but there was a great monster outside that attacked us. It might have got him. Oh my. Is that was it a some kind of bird? Aye. It was like a bird with a bird, some type of scraping and screeching way Turn up. It on. sounded like it came from the tower, from the top of the tower. It, it had antlers. It got closer. We'll keep an eye out for him. We've bricked up the tower. We didn't have any if the creatures to dead. explore it, but but okay. That yeah. the question remains, would you rather stay here where you know you could potentially be safe or do you want to go to the boat most of us have means of getting back to the village without need of a boat it's almost dark I don't know what would happen if we <laughs> took your vessel I'll... she kind of whispers a prayer under her breath I'll stay and help um, let me put um, let me put Barrett to bed uh, Morley and she looks towards the dwarf and he says Ah, uh, well, who the hell would I be if I ran away when something needed to be built? I'll help you with the barricades and such. And he kind of claps his hands together. <coughs> Don't feel too bad off anyway. It's, Let me know what to do and I'll get it done. Is, is building something that dwarves are known for? <laughs> oh. Wait, is she joking? Oh. No, uh, no, no, she's not. not. She she doesn't spend much time on the surface. I just got here. No pressure then. All right, we'll get to it. Okay, just let so me know you're... where to go. We broke the door on the way in. Um, if you could, maybe take a table or two, and if they're indeed gonna try and overrun again, we should probably fix that. Sorry right, about that. we've got some. Uh, we can find a couple of tables, maybe some of them shelves. Knock all them stupid books off them. <laughs> anyway. No right. books are precious. Do it. What is? Well, I'll leave them smell. on the floor if you want to check them out. Hill. He starts going um, towards books. the opposite side of the um, <laughs> hermitage. He'll tell you there's a library here, and then dwarves sort of hate books. Large Love common building. Room here. Hate books. I, I don't think, think it's an inherent particular racial fond of thing. Reading. I'll check the south door. This one here. Um, is there? Is this scent that's going through here? Does it have a particular? Is there any way to get an idea of what it is? Is this a, is this a particular creature's just odor? Is this just the smell of rot? Is, well, is there a, a fish scent to it? Help a little bit, Prion. Is you? Uh, swing open this door you reveal sort of actually what is um if you this is a little bit hard to describe but the two edges of this it looks like a little bay here is actually um covered by a rock formation so it is actually like a little bit of a grotto here um the the rock extends from this southeastern point over top and connects to this um there's just a little nice harborage grotto harborage here but that stench wafts through the room and um you're those of you who aren't um actually sick to your stomach see the um sick man actually vomit on the floor upon s smelling it even the dwarf resistant to poison um is taken aback by it then as you go out you see um in this underground little area here um, floating, mostly floating on the surface, sort of anchored to the bottom, is a collection of corpses 
tied together in fishing nets. Just sitting there, just waiting. About 10 to 15, you would have to imagine. Just bobbing like a fleshy buoy on this surface of the grotto. It's a gooey buoy. I'm sorry. Like a fleshy buoy. And then you see the cleric approach behind. Oh, God, is that... And she kind of looks, rushes out. I don't understand. That's... Where are the rest? It's only... It's only half of them. Um, Peter, check, check the stream to make sure we're seeing what we're supposed to be seeing. Um... Am I revealing something extra? I don't know. Oh, I don't have an icon for it. It's oh, okay, got it. Out there. I just it's don't okay. see a yeah. fleshy buoy. <laughs> no, no. Um, a baba buoy. <laughs> didn't have that token prepared. Uh, <laughs> a fleshy baba buoy. <laughs> don't want to go to the weird place of the internet, you know. <laughs> uh, fair enough. No one Google that. No I one. I go Google there all that. the time. Oh no. Descend to a furnace. <laughs> well, for science. Yeah, for science. So, um, as this mound of um, death sort of reveals itself, and you definitely sense that this is where the stench is coming from, um, I think that is where we will head to a break, and we will solve slash prepare slash repel or do whatever we're going to do on Firewatch Island. <laughs> Um, puzzle, when we puzzle, get back. Puzzle. So we're going to take right, about Samus. a 10 minute break. And welcome back, everyone. Uh, for those of you just catching up, um, our small shore party here has been sent to a place called Firewatch Island, where they were tasked with finding just what happened to a hermitage and the group of... Um, Thinkers, meditators, clerics, monks, etc., that uh, resi uh, resided there. When they arrove, or arrove, <laughs> arrived, they found an a island. Rove, a rove, a rove, a rove, a rove, it's been my ruin. Come on, a rove, and with you, fair maid. Nice. Um, <laughs> they found the island empty except for a monstrous bird-like monstrosity called a Terratan that attacked them viciously, but they attacked it viciously right back and killed it. And um, then exploring the interior, discovered countless signs of battle, um, blood all over, but again, no bodies. They found three survivors, still no bodies. And finally, opening the door to a back grotto with access to the sea they found bundled together with fishing nets about half of the members of this um place were here in the sea bound up in a bundle together um they'd been the source of a terrible stench that they had heard before so now you all sit deciding what to do next as the sun's about to set and night is coming once again. Night, which just the previous night brought this all terrible attack. Um, the priest will turn to you, um, Melvin, um, kind of looking at you in, in an evaluating way and say, are, are, you, a, are you a wizard? Uh, uh, yes, I am. Study the arcane. We bricked up the old tower, but before we took this place over, one resided there. I, if it's possible that there might be something that will help you down uh, there. I don't know. None of us understood it. We thought that the things there might be dangerous, um, and so thought best not to tamper with them or... Uh, okay. Well, you know. Um, well, maybe we should go take a look before night falls fully. 
in that case. Have we had any experience about what creature would do this? What is like gathering all these together to then take it away? Um, so, mm, no. Um, she said that she saw one of them, but there were probably many more that attacked. Um, but, uh, well, I guess make a, um, make a general sort of intelligence check. Oh, God. Jade always plays really brainy characters. I do. <laughs> Four. <laughs> um, maybe something was hungry. It's kind of what you're thinking. Classic Freon. Well, it is that time of day. Is there anything Just... else we can do? We'll start barricading maybe. the doors, like you said. Um, we we, we barricaded the, the the barracks before, but um, maybe the other. Um, maybe we'll do the outer door next time. Um, there's dorm rooms from my other my former companions over um, on the other side of this wall I have a question this grotto does it does it have access to the sea yes it's just and the so other the other side of the of island these, from the main all pier all these bodies here in this net and they're tied together on a rope that's something that's sort of keeping them in place here Yes. If that rope were to be cut, would the bodies go out to sea? Probably. Is there something else that you'd want to have done with the bodies? It's a fairly profane burial, don't you think? Oh, I I could perform I could perform a rite. But all tied together like this and mangled. Huh. I have a feeling that whatever is in store for these thing creatures or these poor people would be far more profane than just letting the sea have them. I I come from the sea and it's it's actually it's a very it's a very peaceful place. Um she does not seem fond of this idea. You will need to make a persuasion check. Both of you are trying. One of you may make it and one of you may assist. Well, um, I'm uh, pretty good at persuading people. <laughs> I don't know about you, Nether. Well, here's the question, DM. Are we using the stats uh, that we have currently or the stats yes. that we would have had? Yep. It's just easier or... that way. Yeah. All right. In that case, I am also quite good at persuading as mm. Nether's blank, unseeing eyes suddenly focus and you see another um, somewhat more alien look in the eyes, almost as if something else looks through her eyes briefly. They're a bit larger and a bit more liquid looking. Um, and Nether takes on a more confident and um, it's, uh, it's just sort of a energetic expression but i'm happy to give you um uh advantage if you want to roll that sounds scary <laughs> so I go ahead and you say better it. do good saran <laughs> yeah i mean i'll try <laughs> so all you can do is try uh beep boop bop oh, beans 15 15 she looks Maybe if we can spend some time giving them a blessing and then... Oh. Yes, of, of course, whatever whatever you need. Um, it doesn't but really sound we like we have a lot of time. Apart? I think... Well, couldn't, couldn't we cut them apart? Send them out. Whatever it is we're going to do, we should do it within the next five minutes. If it's going to take longer than that, we should do something else. Ah, uh, so as gross as this is, I feel like it's necessary for expediency. <laughs> um, Sarayan will perform the ceremony of funeral rite, but just go through the gross water 
touching each bloated corpse along the way. Okay. So ceremony takes an hour to cast? Yes, beans. Gosh, Melvin, why do you know so much? <laughs> I don't know. I it's don't almost know like it's, it'll almost take, like it's written down in books or there, online but, yeah. or something. Who are you all, ZC? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I'm going no, to wade Fitzy, into the you. water and just have a look underneath. Hold my breath and have a look underneath. Um, How dare you, Sean? I don't read. There looks to be at least one very large crab a lot. Of creature just feeding on the bottom-most body, just um, picking off little bits. Uh, but there is also a uh, tether and what looks to be a crude anchor created using um, just some metal scrap. I could go and cut it and bring them in. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you're welcome to do that. Um, I go and cut, cut it, it yeah. and haul them in. It takes some time. Um, you think that this is this would be a process? It takes you about a minute to swim against the um, momentum of all of these things, but you haul again about fifteen bodies or so, all bound together in a net to the shore of the. The grotto. Take him inside. As you do, you hear this. Um, with you have a very high passive perception. You hear a. <laughs> <laughs> that one's going to survive longest. <laughs> I look around to who said it. Uh, uh, uh you're welcome to. Make a perception check. Yes. Sixteen. Um, you see, peeking around the corner of the grotto, what looks to be a, um, old, um, emaciated and stooped over woman um sort of rags covering your head and looking around the corner um <laughs> and then that kind of <gasps> notices that you see her and kind of back slowly away I call out I over there and I go and charge her okay, anyone else following Obviously. Yeah, I will follow. If he's charging, then I guess we're going with him. It'll require swimming as you. Hey, you to need go my aura of protection. The outside the grotto and into a uh, around to the um, sort of more land around the other side. I'm, I'm gonna stay here and ask the the other people whether there's another way around. There is. In that case. It's barricaded here, but you know that there is a... She's said that there is a dormitory on the other side of this wall, and you are welcome to take anything you can find in there that might help you. Okay. Um, uh, I'll shout after the group. I'll, I'll, I'll meet you there. I'm going to go around the other way. That right. seems and you wise! And if dive if, if Melvin's going that way, see... I'm going to go with Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> because um, the the two of you dive in the water and as you round the corner you see up the pathway um sort of actually off into this courtyard here those same two figures that are um um or same two figures you now see two figures that look the same old crones with um uh uh, dirty rags covering their heads, um, stringy, wet hair falling out from under this hood. And they kind of look and um, laugh and say, We just came for the smell. <laughs> mm. And maybe we'll smell you once the maggot out your digestion 
<laughs> Eat yourself, you will, from the inside out. Once they gash open your tummy. <laughs> we all hear this? That's a good thing that uh, Melvin and I don't hear this at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just Prion and I hear this? Yeah, and they're uh, just beyond this three-foot wall. Um, sort of in this area right here, looking towards you. I'll just put these uh, icons up for right now. Let's see. About to fight this kid. These kids. And, uh, they say, don't chase. You'll need your strength. <laughs> I'm incredibly strong. How dare you? Can you endure? Endure endure what? Prion, what are they talking about? The chase. What lurks below? <laughs> what lurks below? What's coming? Uh, what what lurks oh. below? Oh. And are you uh they look to be retreating a bit. You stay there and we will talk and watch. Yes? Talk. <laughs> I'm gonna command. I'm a cast command. <laughs> what? Oh. Can I? <laughs> if you'd like to, just be aware that it would be considered a an aggressive action. They are literally talking about me being eaten. <laughs> they are, and laughing about it. If anyone's aggressive, so they it's them. Are fleeing from you and don't seem to be particularly aggressive, but. Hmm. What if I instead did? Dominate beast. Well, they're not beasts, so beans. Also, no. What's Ugh. coming? Tell us. <sighs> Stay there. We are literally yeah. standing right here. What is coming? <clears throat> it comes from below. They You've already said all this. All the prettiest, smelly corpses for us to look at and poke and taste. Ew. <clears throat> There's a hole in the floor. And it... A raglan hole? Such... <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, and it bursts. <gasps> With the sweetest, sweetest bits. It's where they come from. It's where they bring the others. Make them walk again and make more corpses. Spill more guts. Make this place bearable again. <laughs> Isn't it nice to be indoors? Yeah, I really prefer it to the water, certainly. I was lying. I'd really rather get out of here as soon as we can. Well, let's let's get through the, the barricade then. Okay, it'll take... Uh, if both of you take an action, you can just remove the wood out of the way and then get through. But, um... <gasps> yes! <laughs> What's the creature called? Or creatures? <clears throat> oh, he was captain. His ship was his name. Oh, he spilled much blood upon the seas until, until the faithful, the disgusting putrid worshippers of that sea god conjured the waves to bring it down. This island should have been a fountain with their faithful blood. But no, it sunk. But it sunk next to the plug. <laughs> didn't know, didn't know. But he knew, he knew. <laughs> Hmm. 
go. Has anyone if ever you dare? If you survive tonight, I would love to watch him rend you limb from limb. Well, I don't plan on dying tonight, so looks like you're going to be watching the opposite of what you just said. <sighs> oh. You tell him, Saran. Your shock when it pierces your flesh is going to be so delicious. Joke's on you, I have scales. No one expects it. I'll eat them one by one when they leave you laying on the sea floor. That if won't taste do. very good, so joke's on you again. <laughs> and they continue to sort of walk backwards just a bit towards this um, large cistern. Saran's like having your eight-year-old brother throw insults at someone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, you stupid. <laughs> yeah, shut up, brown eyes. <laughs> you and your talking mouth. <laughs> and your, your hands with fingers. Why, you're talking mouth and your dumb words. <laughs> As they continue to talk, they uh, this is kind of what their form ends up looking like after a bit of conversation. Just so you know. Okay. Relatives of yours, Serene? Yes. <laughs> we will watch. We will watch. What don't happens when you don't quick. follow Persona? Uh, I knock on the door. Okay. The, this door is open. As they um, just kind of end up getting into this cistern kind of climbing into it and you can hear them dipping themselves down into the water and this you can just see their heads looking eyes sparkling beyond their seaweed hair um, <coughs> and that door opens easily to you okay and reveals a blood soaked dormitories I assume we're already inside, right, Peter? Yep, at about this, this time you guys meet on the inside. I'd like to take a look around, see if there's anything useful or valuable in here that we could use. Sure. Uh, you can try an investigation check again. All right. Another listens with interest to the uh, retelling of the brilliant conversation that mm. Sarian just had outside. Green talks around. mad smack. Mad smack. <laughs> Should we look at a tower? Yeah, I, th I think that might be best. Also, why don't we just take the survivors and leave? There might be more. Oh, I suppose that's fair. Yeah, uh, Melvin with a nine, um, looking around, you, you kind of start to lose patience, and it's like all these bunks look the same. They're just basically all aesthetics um, have many belongings and it's just all pretty poor and um, uninteresting what they do have uh, I'll walk around this corner to see if it leads to the tower um, it does lead to a bricked over wall and um, it'll take you Probably 15 minutes or so to, um, at least from this place to unbrick and get into here. Let me actually double check. Ah, so it does lead into the tower area. This one is bricked over. Um, okay. Though she said that there's a um, storeroom below there. Um, old, ancient, you know, that they bricked up. That they bricked up. They did not brick up the way to the wizard's tower. They've just left it undisturbed. Okay. I'll open the door. So, okay. Um, well, yeah, sorry. This one is bricked up. Um, okay. I'll break it down. And if you want to spend some time, you can open it there, but it will 
take just a bit of um, yeah. <clears throat> 15 well, minutes or so. I, I think it the out. it wasn't the way to the wizard's tower open, so this is not the way to the tower? That's correct. Um, it's up to you. If you want to spend time getting into the old storeroom, you can, but that does not lead up to the tower. This is just its own. The base of the tower, there's no stairs leading up. When so you go why was this here. bricked up? They bricked up everything. If they were coming in with every entrance. We should leave this bricked up and we should just go upstairs and see if there's another way into the tower up there. Okay. I'll do that then. Let's go up to the mezzanine level. Okay. Yes. Ooh, look at you oh, with the fancy, fancy mapping. Yeah. All the doors are just open up here. Um, and they've described basically the contents of it anyway. So, um, you'll notice Is this where that we came up here or yep. Up the stairs. So we're, we're you'll notice, gonna... you know, some features like, um, up at the front here, there are crenellations, defensive positions. What this looks to be a guard room up here. Um, and again, hatches down into the areas that had the arrow slits from before uh, num uh, over in the south east um, well is the quarters of what looked to be the prior um, so the person who was running this previously um uh, sort of um, worshipper and there is a chest there um, in this uh, room with all the uh, tables and chairs seems to just be a, um, a chamber for study and such so anyway but Moving along, going straight to the wizard's chamber, you do open up um, the tower here, <clears throat> which um, is pretty bare, just showing stairs leading up um, an area. There are a bunch. Of, there are a couple cabinets along the walls, uh, mostly worn wood, seem to be undisturbed for quite some time. Um, you take you can take a few minutes to search it if you want, or you can just head directly up. I will head up. Directly up. The rain mm -hmm. follows close behind. Gotcha. Okay. Um, which will bring you to a study. Um, what look to be in abandoned quarters. Haven't been touched for quite some time. There's a potbelly stove in the um, north. Uh, the wooden frame and slats of an old bed are pushed up against a spiral staircase that rises to a trap door in the ceiling leading to the belfry above. Under an arrow slit looking toward the island's western peak, a dusty desk is covered in debris and fresh bird droppings. Hinges hang on either side of each arrow slit, indicating that at one time they had shutters to keep out the elements. Um, so there's a desk with various belongings, a large pile of debris here. Um, I'd like to take a look around. Okay. Um, and I'm going to use my inspiration for this. Okay. Okay. It's not been the best so far, so. Yeah. All right, uh, 18. There you go, Mel. Well-used inspiration. Speaking uh -huh. of talking smack, DM, <laughs> it's been bad. <laughs> I should start um, rolling my crack and dice. Tell you. So one of the first things you do is they see um, a sort of uh, decaying journal. You can tell that it's a journal just right at the outset, and you hand that to... Um, I guess, Saran. Um, oh, another journal for you to read? Saran <laughs> takes it quickly Amazing. out of his hands. Which it shows the last... Um, God! 
entry Sweet. of a wizard named Arceus. Um, searching through, you can tell there are numerous maps. Uh, there is a nautical chart leading to um, a point of interest near this island that he's discovered as well. Um, and you can tell that he, um, based on this equipment that his, one of his hobbies and passions was exploring sunken ships and um, especially certain uh, wrecks and sunken temples. Um, there is a, a um, hobby, but not that hobby. There is a two compartments that you discover with uh, having beaten the 16, which beats both of the secret compartments in here. Um, there is a ring of free action hidden in the wall. Damn. As well as three ounces of oil of slipperiness. There are three potions of water breathing. There is an immovable rod and a folding boat. Hey, all his shit. And then you also see a glint coming from the um, rubble. There are some items which are described in his notes, what he calls pressure capsules, which are um, strange sort of air bladders that you can swallow and it will prevent you from suffering the effects of deep underwater terrain. So um, essentially, essentially, the deeper you go, if you don't have a swim speed or cold resistance and such, um, you get exhaustion 10 times as fast, but this will nullify those effects. And there is a uh, little um, flask, which is carefully contained within its own wooden box and also inside a leather satchel, um, which contains three ounces of sovereign glue. You determine it to be, it is labeled. Wow, that's quite a haul. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this tower. <sighs> um, anyone oil interested oil in ring of free action? And um, there are, there are some interesting journal entries here that are. Oh, uh, I am very interested in the related journal to entries. what's going on here. <laughs> I've learned my lesson about reading other people's journals. Yeah, it's my turn to read someone else's journal. Oh, so it's okay now? Um, this person is probably dead. So, yes. Oh. It's just part of the public domain now. That's how that works. Oh, uh, okay. Do you need somebody to read this aloud, DM? If you would like, um, yes. That'd be nice so the audience can hear the last journal entries of... The wizard Arceus. Serene can, can read them. Oh. Yeah, Nether cannot read, so uh, <laughs> if I were to read it, I would read it in That's a fair. different voice. But uh... our worst fears are confirmed. Is everyone listening? <clears throat> Serene, make sure all eyes are on her. This is very important. Our worst fears are confirmed. Virgil has brought word of disaster. A war galley fully loaded with pirates approaches from the southwest. It flies the flag of the raiders and bears the name of the cursed ship Tamarot. Tamarot? Tamarot. 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 What say you, Peter? Does it matter? Sorry. It's the strangest journal I've ever heard. Tamarot. <laughs> There's a lot happening. Tamarot. <laughs> we must prepare what feeble defense we can muster. Woe to the folk of the coast at the approach of this bloody tide. Miracle of miracles. The storm lord has answered the prayers of our illustrious captain. A furious storm blew in from the open sea and swept the war galley to its doom. But I believe that the vessel went down near the pit of hatred, an ill-starred undersea chasm two miles south of Firewatch Isle. This does not bode well, for the rift is said to be a passage to a source of interminable evil that was long ago sealed away. If the wreckage should rupture the wards, terrible darkness might be unleashed. I must mount an expedition to the sunken hulk and make sure all is well. A fell wind blows this evening. I fear the wards on the rift have been broken. I must set out first thing in the morning to inspect the wreckage. Um, uh, Serene, I, I think that word is chaplain, not captain. <laughs> Melvin what? has been reading over your shoulder this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Serene bats him away. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <clears throat> I said chaplain. 
Okay, whatever you say. So a little bit, of, a little bit of meta here, DM. Um, uh huh. Based on the some of the items that have been found here, one could possibly suspect that we are expected to head out into sea to pick up where this fellow left off. Um, Nether would like to make an intelligence check to see whether or not that is something. Well, that that is meta, so not necessarily an intelligence thing. So, All right. you are able to discern that the greater danger comes from something that was awoken beneath the sea. And you know that there are now assaults happening on this place, and they are dragging bodies away after slaughtering um, creatures. And these are undead, water-looking, water-like looking things coming in, slaying things, dragging bodies back to the water. Um, that seems to be the pattern for now. Um, so mounting a defense is a step, perhaps, or attack. Going, going after the problem. <sighs> Melvin, I think you're not going to like the next few hours very much. Oh, no. Don't tell me we're going out to sea again. All right, I won't tell you. We'll make it a surprise. We're going oh, out to sea again. That's worse. Okay. Um, you see um, <laughs> the woman, um, Janor, kind of comes up the stairs. Ah, did you find something useful? Y yeah, a couple things, actually. Uh, and some not so useful things, like the knowledge of what we have to go do now. Uh, oh. You found a journal. It would oh. seem there is some bit of bother with the floor of the surface of the floor of the ocean nearby here. Probably something that's been brewing for a long time. Best we go take care of it. Do you need do you need assistance? We would really like to have a healer, actually. That'd be great. Yeah, if there's anyone you could spare. Do you need it right now, or do you need me to... Uh, now would probably be better... Which one of uh, you is you don't, injured? You don't, if you, are you, do you think you could come with us? Yeah, we need someone to come with us. Uh, you're taking, taking a boat somewhere, like another island? Oh no, we're going to the bottom of the sea. We've got the magic Her that can take us there. Face kind of pales. We've got plenty of magic for people who need and it. She clutches a symbol of Valkyr on her chest. And says, oh. I never done anything like this before, but oh, with Valkyr's okay. faith, I will go. And you feel wave warm behind your back, actually. I was Ram. literally about to and say, you less hear... things to work out with Volker, there's always Persona. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you hear a voice behind you that says, you should look well on her, Sarayan. Look at her faith and how she expresses it. And you still haven't learned Persona, Volker, it makes no difference. What do you mean it makes no difference? We worship those of the waves, as all will one day. That so you is don't, our purpose. So you don't care if I get people to worship Persona per se? No. In fact, I haven't seen many worshippers of Umberly at all recently. If you would like to bring some into her bosom, I would be most pleased. Okay. You have work to do. Goodbye. Okay, bye. And I, hanging up now. <laughs> <laughs> and she, the, uh, uh, she agrees to come with you, um, provided she's you. Ex I'm sure you explain the magic that 
goes along. Just tell her, you know, if she were, if she she ever feels worried, just look at how well Melvin is doing. Yeah, like, he's doing better. great. <laughs> so <laughs> I can breathe. I can breathe underwater. Doll can breathe underwater. I can, can breathe underwater. I can breathe for a while, but not for long. If if we started the day on the boat, Melvin would have ritual cast water breathing. He okay. did that every single day of our travels that we were on the boat. All right. So anyone okay. who would have wanted to partake in that could have. Yes. So that's up to 10 willing so, creatures. So uh, I guess the only person who needs a potion of water breathing would be our cleric. What did her say, you say her name was? Um, her name is... <clears throat> Did you say you found a ring? Oh, uh, yes. He here you go. Her name is Janor Stormswake. Janor. What does the ring do? Any worth any of any one of us? Uh, GM, well, did you say that I know what it is already, or do I need to identify uh, it? Well, it'll still take you a bit of time to attune to it. Um, or I could just cast Identify as a ritual. It'd take 10 minutes to figure it out, or 11 minutes, rather. If you'd like. Um, you did say what it was. I did say I what of, it was. Yeah. I kind of assumed it just had like a little a little note attached it to it. It has a note. It, it, it still has the tags on. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, a it, it's, a, it's, it's a ring of... It says it's a ring of free action. I think that means that you can't be like restrained or something oh, who's that good to go to anybody it'd be useful for absolutely any one of us would you would you like it for now who e you uh, if, if you want me to wear it I'll, I'll wear it you're giving pre on a ring <laughs> would you like it sir hand <laughs> Saran blushes the <laughs> deepest shade of coral. <laughs> I'm engaged to <laughs> her. She just walks away. Uh, that, that's that's what I thought. Um, it's getting stranger. Here, here you go. Here you uh, go, Prion. Uh, just when you uh, thought she uh, couldn't get uh, a stranger. That's, that's coming from me. Yeah. <laughs> a ring of free uh, 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 action. Uh, action. Is it in, uh, it is. Okay, I'll wear it. Uh, so it will, um, looking at the maps. Nice. Um, so yeah, it'll give exact nautical coordinates, which... Is anyone here familiar with um, navigator's tools? Or nope. proficient in them? No, our, our navigator is not with us. I, ha I have cartographer's tools, but not navigator's tools. What about a three-dragon anti-set? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tell you what! <laughs> Pick Peter, a card I, and I'll tell you if you're in the right place. I, <laughs> Sorry, I, I thought that it would be her friends. Came out for that, <laughs> That's how she our, talks uh, when she plays Three Dragon Anti. Uh, Melvin was the backup navigator when um to, when uh, Talise was not available. That's he right. Had uh, okay, you can her. make a intelligent face check with that. Okay. Not using your um, uh, proficiency bonus, but it mm -hmm. is a pretty easy check as it's uh, you have exact nautical coordinates. It's just kind of plotting it. Now I'm Ten. just imagining Thorin like, place your bets, place your bets. <laughs> what? Uh, that is basically um, the check for following a roadmap. So there you go. Ten will work. Maybe not as fast as you liked. Maybe sometimes you're like, oh shit, was this the right way? But um, assuming you guys are, are, do all of you have a swim speed too? Or are you taking the boat out? Neither has Elvin a swim speed. doesn't have a swim speed. I, I, I did, I did have not prepare a swim Alter Self speed. today. I could get myself a swim speed, but it would take me eight hours of rest. 
what if Melvin rode on Sarayan's back a la uh, Bella and Edward? <laughs> <laughs> Like a little spider monkey. Hang on, spider monkey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are both as cute and as mutually abusive as that relationship. <laughs> perfect. Uh, I mean, be Melvin, more perfect. Melvin is four foot eleven and only weighs eighty pounds. To be fair. Perfect. Oh, so Rain's like five seven. <laughs> Let's go. So to keep up with everyone else saran carrying melvin <laughs> it is going to be difficult and you risk taking exhaustion i love i'll do it i mean i hate your guts hop on dum dum <laughs> um wow dm yeah are there any large swimming creatures around here um uh, um I would imagine that the corpses might have attracted some sharks. There was a giant crab underneath the corpses. I don't know uh, if the crab is going to swim any faster than we are. <laughs> um, crab walk all the way. Uh, <laughs> make a uh, perception check or, um, yeah, perception check. All right. I think I'll have Dahl make a perception check, who also has a swimming speed now that... Uh, because of the feet I took. So um, as Doll splashes into the water, changes the form of this sort of anglerfish looking sprite and becomes more of an anglerfish with like lots of tentacles. And a perception check of 15. Okay. Um, and actually, uh, go ahead and make another nature check too. You've been pretty... Well, let's see which way this goes. Oop. 21. Your nature's been ridiculous today. Um, it's like, you know, uh, but a ridiculous so looking nature. around, you see it's becoming dark, which makes it much harder to see further in the murky waters. Um, there are probably some things around looking, but there's still this giant crab, which is eating at the bodies. And you know, <laughs> with a 21 nature check that a giant crab has about a 30 foot swim speed. Is this a monstrosity or a beast? It's a medium beast. Oh, it's fine. It's a medium beast. <laughs> Excuse me. It's just sitting there eating dead flesh. You seem to be rather occupied, but I wonder if we could uh, beg a favor. Can you communicate with that? <laughs> it it takes um it kind of takes one of its giant claws and <laughs> snaps off a limb and kind of throws it in your direction here <laughs> we need your help to take us someplace Fine. i didn't know you spoke crap Because if you don't, we'll destroy you. It kind of turns and snaps its claws and then retreats a bit. Make an intimidation check. 16. <clears throat> Where? Just follow us. Bring that one with you. Melvin. Uh, you hear nether bubbling about under the water, and then you suddenly see a giant crab running at you with um, its pincers wide open. It'll be fine, Melvin. Just shut your eyes. So Rayan doesn't know what's happening, so she assumes that the crab is going to attack Melvin. <laughs> and she does nothing. <laughs> Fight me! Fight me! <laughs> she starts hopping He's around. Sarayan, Sarayan, stop! Stop! Crab's gonna Why help us. should I? The crab's I don't know help this us. crab. Oh, he's he's a good-hearted crab. Explain your intentions, crab. The crab clamps down on Melvin's um, uh, cloak, and then it just looks down, looks towards Nether. Come on, don't here we go. kill. And uh, okay, 
<laughs> and it'll follow you. There we go. Serene is aghast. <laughs> pulling Melvin with it all the way down into the deep, deep depths. Melvin I'm coming for you, Melvin. and occasionally pointing the correct direction out to you all. <laughs> no. I'm coming. <laughs> the best use of beast talk ever. <laughs> the descent is perhaps even um, more than you would expect. Um, uh, and those of you, does everyone have um, dark vision? Let me check. Nope. Nether, you lose all sight as the water becomes murky and as black. As Doll's senses begin to uh, no longer be able to see. Um, just let me double check on that. I do up to 60 feet. Yeah, I thought you did. Melvin does as well. Yep, all right. Investment of the Chainmaster does not give it special sight. So, yeah, um, both of us are effectively blind. So as we begin to lose our sight, she sort of grabs onto someone who has it. And is like, okay. make sure that doesn't lose the group. So you continue down, down, down into the sea. And when you are sure or in a place you, you've reached the bottom, it just keeps descending and you see coral, you see schools of fishes, strange fishes down here. Um, those, like, none you've seen closer to the surface, like none you've caught, Prion. And then suddenly there's no life, no kelp, no crabs, lobsters scurrying across the surface, just hard rock, sand, no fish, still murky water. And looming ahead of you is a rotting skeleton of a war galley, standing up on its stern, looming up from the ocean bottom. The sinking ship broke in half during its descent, its bow gone missing, but the stern emerges from the sea floor like a spike. The sandy bed around the wreckage is scattered with partially buried bones and debris. As you approach the wreck, the water becomes unnaturally cold. Fish that swarmed previously in the waters above conspicuously absent. And this coldness hits you almost like a punch in the chest. Um, I need everyone as you draw near this place to make a constitution saving throw. So this first one will be for um, actually So uh, the first, this first one will be for a doll. Gets to use my saving throw. My spells and saving throw. Oh, good. And then Nether will try. You got this gonna use, giant Nether's, crab. Nether's gonna use its inspiration <laughs> or inspiration. Okay. Oh well, there you go. How many There's... folks get the plus two? Everyone Any? around you, so I would say pretty much everyone here does. Dope. Don't forget. Oh. I'm useful now. Oh, you stop. Um, bip, bip, so you bip, bip, see, bip. as you guys feel this cold, suddenly Melvin, the claw goes limp, and the crab just floats there, lifeless in the water. Oh, you killed the crab. <laughs> it's the way of the sea. You don't tell me about the way of the sea. I'm getting Fran the says I know, tears streaming I'm down getting her face. the feeling that I know more about it than you might. No, it is you. Uh, so let's see numbers here. Um, 
advantage going on. Uh, is anyone, did anyone come below 16 total? You uh, said it was constitution? Yeah. With, um, with a, a combination of... Jeez, beans, nine. Ooh, I felt like I should have done my inspiration so, and I did it. Uh, take 20 cold damage, those of you who succeeded. Take 10. You take 20 cold damage. Make a charisma saving throw on top of that. Oh my gosh. I am you using my inspiration this 10 time. 10 points of cold damage? On a success. All right, that killed Dull. Oh my gosh, forever? Uh, everybody a... makes a charisma save? Is that right? And everyone makes a charisma save. I'm using my inspiration. I can't afford it. Yeah, I'm glad I did. Uh, 21. Same nope, here. that's a charisma check. So that would have been a 16 plus 7. So plus... Do, does the plus 2 count for me as well? Yes. Uh, it's already it's factored. already factored into yours. That's true. Thank you so much. Um, uh, eight and five, or yeah, it's actually you a feel plus two. this coldness sort of pierce into your being, and what's more than that, there's this overwhelming sense of evil and dread in this area, and you feel yourself um, mm -hmm. more susceptible to death. As weird as that sounds, but um, both of you gain vulnerability to necrotic damage in what this if area. i'm resistant to cold and you take half of the damage that you took okay cool thank you so you still take i am uh... that yes so that you can see <laughs> the sunken bit big of brain <laughs> ship you can see amongst the bones down here what look to be fresh bodies scattered around some of them carefully tucked under the other bits of bones. And then the north, a pulsating light emitting unnatural colors permeating this area. Um, there is another piece of stone, a uh, piece of stone set aside that you can tell it's far off in the distance, but it contains writing looks to be elvish so as Maybe. the light as the light shines over nether she's sort of pulling there limply without her familiar she cannot see she's gone back to being blind and she does not look good looks extremely weak and barely conscious or your friend also needs to make these okay Okay. Um, she is also looking not super great, but she did make her save, so she is still living. Um, and she comes over to you, Nether, and... A cure... Or... A. 18 points of healing. I think so. She nods, looks absolutely panicked. I've got three healing potions, so I hand one to Nether. Nether drinks it. Roll 20, what's the problem? Hmm. Let me try that again. Alrighty. Nether is <clears throat> looking much better. Uh, thank you. It's uh, cold and a bit evil down here. Aye. Does that stone look like it should be over the top of that hole? I have no idea. I can't see it. I am going to cast protection versus good and evil on myself. Okay. Nether is going to cast invisibility upon herself. 
and she's going to grasp a hold of Melvin. Because she figures Melvin's going to stay in the back. Um, I'm going to go over to this stone. Do you want us on the map? Yes, please. As you descend down towards it, it looks... It's quite large. It looks very heavy. Um, can, I, can I read it? Yes. It is an Elvish and Aquan. I can read both. Um... <clears throat> It says, Let that which we have sealed here beneath be ne'er released by mortal life, lest all life be quenched by the husks which they bring. Tell Serene to come with me, and I'll go and over to the stone, see if we can both lift it. <clears throat> okay. Are you going over there, Serene? Oh, heck yeah. Please drag yourself onto the map, over by Prion. Beans, where'd I end up? Uh. I don't think you're oh. on there yet. I'm not. Yeah. So as you um, and as you guys come down, you can see that these bones, some of them are moving ever so slightly as this light seems to pulsate out. Bits of the bodies begin to twitch. <clears throat> and as you approach this heavy, heavy carved stone, as you begin to reach down towards it, um... Uh, a the bones jitter ever uh, faster and faster and emerging from them is a figure figure a figure oh. looks <laughs> like this um grasping a sword and tentacles emerging from his body um, uh, he says the lord of death will have you and guess what yay um gee what I never would have guessed <laughs> I never would have he guessed he attacks you Nice. I rolled a natural 20. Boo. <laughs> Alright. Um I'm missing Sarayan. There's Sarayan. Alright. So as it emerges, and it's mostly looking forward towards the two of you, which are looking towards the seal in this crack uh, here. Um, and it is going to reach out towards you, and one of these, the, the tentacle-like thing on its head is going to squirt forth a cone of foul necrotic ink. I need both of you to please make a constitution saving throw. Twenty-seven. Ha ha ha! Well, then you 22. can take half of twenty-three necrotic damage. Unless one of you is vulnerable to it. No, we Did you all make your your, con your Christmas save. save over there? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, that Leon, you failed your charisma save. Was it the f the charisma save? Was it the charisma save? I thought it was the first one. First one was no, for you cold. Made your Second save. one was for the oh, okay. was for the necrotic effect. Well, Prion, you take twenty-two points of necrotic damage. Twenty-two. Uh oh. Then I Ouch. take half of that. Yes, you take um, eleven. Sorry, right. and that is its turn. Melvin. 
Um, I, I can see him, right? I've got dark vision. Yes. So, yeah. Um, I don't like that. Uh, I'd like him to make a dexterity save as I cast Odalux Resilient Sphere on him, as a um, a bubble of uh, ink is going to pop into existence around him. Hopefully. DC 15. Interesting. Well, he has saved. All right. The way David said, all right. Sorry, he is not. He has failed. So defeated. Oh, great. All right. (laughs) Oh! (laughs) That was a fourth level spell. (laughs) I mean... I get All one right. of those a day. <laughs> <laughs> so bummed out. <laughs> okay, I guess. All right. And it is <sighs> sitting there in the sphere. Yeah, Interesting. I just got to maintain concentration now. What? Give up right. concentrating. Ow. <laughs> you guys okay. can do it. Plug up the hole while I've got him trapped. Another... All right, Nether is going to cast Summon Fae. Tuatha tell Nuanda, Tuatha. And she summons a little creature that's like a large oxalotl. And it goes... Oh my God, kind of I looks love looks around with, with little cute eyes and its little mouth. Um, and it... Uses a bonus action. Actually, so it's going to go on the turn after Nether. So that is her mm-hmm. action. Um, if possible, DM, um, I'd like to reach into my um, bag and pull out a uh, assassin vine seed and hand it to uh, um, Zorb Zorb. Okay. Um, Tell and me the name is Zorb Zorb. Yes, the name is Zorb Zorb. Have, have, um, just have her, have it in her hand. And then on her turn, she is going to use a bonus action to face step right next to the creature. Um, and then is going to use, it's a Trixie Fae which means a five-foot cube of darkness is going to appear right there, which Nether is going to sort of know is there instinctually and (laughs) hide behind. So that square right there is just dark. Okay. Just a square? It can do just a square? Just a five-foot square. Five-foot cube with magical darkness which lasts until the end of its next turn. Okay. And um, uh, since since there's no very uh, confused, but I'll just go with it anyway. Okay, so since there's there's no uh, attack that can be made with the Autolux resilient sphere sphere, um, Zorp Zorp will just hold an attack to attack in case the um, the spell drops. Okay. And what that's you do my turn Sarayan? and Zorp Zorp. Um. So the first thing Serena will do is. <laughs> react to the fact that she is pretty badly injured. Uh, and so at this point, she's kind of been oblivious up until now. Uh, the vigor of use, et cetera, et cetera. But she looks and realizes that, you know, there's blood kind of seeping through the cracks in her armor. Um, and so she takes a steadying breath and mutters a prayer. And I will expend 15 points from my lay on hands pool to heal myself as she utters a prayer for to Serana. Uh, for Serana. I've been playing a lot of Skyrim, you guys. Not Serana. Persona. <laughs> Anyone oh, yeah. else vampires? Okay, no, just me. All right. Oh, um, gotcha. Yeah, oh, Serana. Yeah. She's, she's so sassy. We love her. I, I hate um, the way she's always like, oh, it's good to be out of the cave. And then three seconds later, she's like, let's get out of this weather and go in a cave. Oh, I know. <laughs> she can't make up her mind. Um, so actually, I'll take 15 points from my Lay on Hands pool as my action. And then um, 
Ah, <sighs> beep bop. Saran will. Let's see. Uh, I suppose. Hmm. Sorry, I just want to make sure that I can do this. So am I aware of um, Nether behind me or is Nether invisible still? Nether, uh, uh, Nether is invisible. Yeah. And Please. behind darkness. Actually, okay. I guess when I cast a spell. Uh, yeah, you would have become visible after the. Yeah. But she'd still be obscured from my sight. Oh, uh, you could see Nether. She's not completely dope. obscured from you. So, Sarayan, remembering that Nether has come quite close to being gravely injured a number of times this day, uh, she will use her bonus action to cast um, Shield of Faith on Nether. Ooh! Cool. All right. And that will be my turn. Um, our uh, friend here doesn't really know what to do, so she is. Which one of you is still wounded? If anyone, anyone the, badly? The two of them. Yeah, I'm up injured near the front. She'll swim down and um, cast a second level cure wounds on you, Prion. There you go. For. It's a good one. 14 points of healing. Thank you. That's her turn. Your turn, Creon. Um, I Stone try and... Is stuck in the muck. You'll have to first try to lift it out of the seabed. I will try to lift it out of the seabed. And that is a... Basically strength. I'm trying to think of this. Strength or... Straight up. Um, sorry. Yeah. Um, to lift it out, make an athletics check. Uh, actually, I underneath the rock, I cast shape water. So the water, it's like, it's, it's so stuck underneath down in the muck into the seabed. Right. Okay. Yeah. Trying to think of how I could use shape water. I suppose it could no be used way. to help someone else lift it um, and provide some sort of lift underneath. But, uh, I'll try and lift it out first. So what okay. do you want? So a strength. Yeah. Sixteen. So yes, with that you, um, uh, yeah, with a straight straight strength tech, mm, can pop it out from underneath, and it is very heavy. So it immediately mm, sinks down on top, but you have freed it from the earth with your action. Um, can I action surge to move it? Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, action surge and move it and try and drop it over the hole. Okay. Um, make another strength check. Twelve. Um, 12, so we'll say you get it halfway. You're able to just scooch it over just a little bit, and you're still there with it standing up, but with 12 Could almost done falls back on you. Then. So you're saying with what? Could I have done it with shape water then that, at that time? Oh, it probably would have been about the um, been about the same result. You can get it towards there, but um, it's still standing up. You've got it right at the edge right now, standing on its end. And I will uh, do my second wind. Oh, wow. All right. Me dumb. He can't do anything, so he's going to roll over there. Melvin. 
Um, well, I'll be maintaining my concentration. He just rolled that right. He took the sphere with him. Is that, is that correct? Okay, cool. I'll be maintaining my, my concentration on that, um, and I'll, I'll start uh, rummaging in my bag for the, the, the sovereign glue that we had. Um, okay. Just in case we need it to glue down the, the thing, I want to have it prepared, ready to go. Understood. Nice. That, that'll Anything be my else? action to get that out uh, of the bag. Uh, uh, Nether will suggest uh, to Melvin, I think there's darkness nearby. You should get in it. That way you can make sure that something won't come up and take away your concentration. Oh, okay. I, I see that. Um, it, it, DM, am I able to move without a swim speed down here? Yeah, you can. It's basically half difficult terrain. Yeah, okay. So I'll move into the darkness then. Okay, move into the darkness. Never. All right, so the thing that I was going to do, I forgot I'd already cast invisibility. So I, I've cast my spells. I can't do the thing I was thinking I would try to do. So um, Zorp Zorp is going to, uh, uh, Nether is going to hold her attack to um, attack something that is a, a valid target. Okay. Um, I guess she wouldn't know that the um, <laughs> resilient sphere is up there, but um, maybe she is able to sense it. I, I said that he was contained. He was contained. All right. So she, I shouted hold... that out so that uh, Saran and Prion would go. She'll hold a um, an action to attack the next thing that she senses is a um, threat on. Zorp Zorp's turn. Zorp Zorp is going to use face step bonus action to step right there, create that sphere of darkness again, right where the same one was. And then it is also going to hold an attack for something that is nearby that can be attacked. And that is us. Okay. Time. Is anyone doing anything? I guess so. Melvin is. There's nothing right now that would break your concentration on the sphere, right? All right. Uh, yeah. So you guys have essentially eight rounds to do something. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you guys can discuss what you want this to be. All right. I will tell Zorb Zorb to inform me when the rock is over the um, the hole. And with a few rounds, Prion, you can get it there. Can we push him into the hole? <laughs> Not fit down there. Well, the the, the guy. <laughs> what what if we jammed him into the hole? No, it's okay. three feet wide. <laughs> Okay. Um, is God. is the hole is is, is this in um, like soft sand or something or it's is it kind in, of in rocky. a rock? It's rocky. Yeah. And does it look like it's like level with the bottom of the stone that Prion has? Uh, it looks like the stone could have been used to seal it in the past. Like, so it like looks like we could get like a flush. Away. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna slowly swim my way over, since I can only move 15 feet around. Um, and I'll hand over the Sovereign glue and motion at the... and, and, and say, maybe we should glue, glue it down so that it can't be broken off again. Yeah, do that. Okay. You'd think they'd have done that the first time. Yeah, you think. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and apply some of the Sovereign glue. I'm not sure how much of it we'll need to be able to get a seal, but probably two applications. Leave you one All to right. play with for another time. Sweet. And yeah, you can do that, and you guys can, I guess, just tip it down. This is the plan. Mm -hmm. Careful action with everyone helping. He's gonna roll around to here and be really upset about it. <laughs> but um, <laughs> well, we yeah, don't care about something your from beyond there. Feelings. Do you, do it, you hear? Do you all hear it, something? I, <laughs> as it seals off, um, you those of you who failed are no longer um, vulnerable to necrotic damage. Now, getting to a point, um, what's the plan? that it's sealed. We'll say you have three rounds left. Dogpile. I'm going to dogpile this thing, don't we? Okay. Makes sense. Place yourselves in whatever position you want to be in. 
that takes two of my turns. <laughs> Uh, so that that sphere, uh, cube of darkness oh, would that's be gone, gone, isn't it? Okay. So, never mind. Uh, but I can I can recast it every turn, but it has to be within five feet of Zorb Zorb. No, it's so, okay. I'll just uh, stay back here. All right. All right. No, it's okay. I'll just I'll stay back here. You guys got it. You guys got it. I've got ranged spells. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so at some point it comes about where you know at the beginning of your turn Melvin it will drop right it would be that's the way it would work it would end on the beginning I mean, he of can Melvin's end it any time right? I could dr just drop it at any point what is your when do you want to drop it um, well on the last turn before I drop it I'd like to prepare Tasha's mind whip to cast mm. as I drop concentration that it requires concentration to hold oh the it does spell. you're right uh yeah then i'll just drop it at the top of my turn okay um at the top so of your right turn after cool. it would go so it drops and we go all the held actions um i presume everybody held an action yeah he pro he, right. he, it probably did as well actually it did probably. um and Prion and Melvin, please make constitution saving throws. Okay. That's another blast of necrotic ink. 27. Plays out. All right. 19. Uh, take half of 32 necrotic damage. Glad I made that save. <laughs> so do I still, even though I passed? You take 16. I'm vulnerable. Not anymore, since you oh, sealed nope. the rift. Okay, 16. Could have been nasty otherwise. Yeah. Uh, cool. Melvin, it is your turn. Uh, so does anyone else get would be here and held George actions? Would be there. Oh, yeah, held actions yeah, yeah. go off. Yes. Uh, I will attack it. Fourteen. Miss. Um, that's it. If, if it's a held, held action. Yep. Serene gets a reaction, or if she wanted to have held an attack or a spell, but Shield yeah. of Faith is a spell too, so um, she would have had to pick. Actually, well, yeah, go ahead. I was just Another... going to hit it with Wave. Okay, go ahead. Yay! Let's see. Boop. Beep, boop, boop, bop, beep. Oh, beans! That was a natural, natural one. one. Unfortunately, is going to be a guaranteed miss. But do I still get my extra attack? No. Beans. Not on, uh, <laughs> okay. That'll come no up problem. in a second here. Thank you. <clears throat> um. Nether, Nether, Nether gets to do two Eldritch blasts, right? On a held it's action. A single cast, yeah. 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 Weird. Two beams. So hitting AC twenty two hits for two points of force damage. Right. And then AC ten. That'll miss. That'll miss. Alright. Zorb Zorb is going to um, misty step right there and make a Square of darkness right where nether is. Okay. Um, like right there? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Um, very good. That's uh, so, Melvin, it is your now your turn. Yep. Um, I'm going to. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, it, it would get a turn before Melvin. No, because. It was just holding its action on its turn because Melvin. Um, right, so if it uh, held its action and then everybody took their held action, then aren't we back to the top of the order? Or no, I got it. That's I got all, it now. Never mind. Happens Sorry. Everything happened yeah. immediately as Melvin's yep, turn started and his spell ended. And I so, apologize. I get it now. Yeah. Um, I, I will 
uh, lash out with my arm as a uh, inky tendril extends from it, uh, and I'm attempting to mind whip it again. Um, that'll be a intelligence saving throw, DC 15. Int save. I love those int saves. Uh, I've got an eight. Ha! Yes. Uh, nine points of psychic damage, and um, again, can't take reactions until the end of its next turn, and it must choose a move action or bonus action on its next turn. Move action or bonus action? Correct. Oh, I thought it was move action or action, but that's different. That's slow. Cool. Gotcha. So it's, it's um, move action or bonus action. One oh, of the three. I thought. Gotcha. Okay, that is what it. That is what it is. You, the way you strung those together got me confused, and I thought. <laughs> Sorry. You nerfed yeah. it for a second. All right, gotcha. Nether, your turn. All right, two eldritch blasts. That's twelve. Twelve misses. And that's a twenty-five. That definitely hits. I don't know why I'm rolling two twenty-siders for damage, but they're, it's only coming up with one, so that's good. Six points of force damage. Um, Zorp Zorp is going to run in and attack. And attack. Hitting AC 18. That hits. And let's see, let me double check. With its little short sword, it is going to do... Right, so slash three does eight points of piercing damage and um, also five points of force damage. And he's going to use a bonus action to Misty Step back and put it, another square of darkness where Nether is. It takes um, six points of cold damage as it hits it with that attack. All right, got it. And that is me done. Sarayan, I need you at the beginning of your turn to take 10 points of cold damage. And then 20 points of healing. Oh my God, thank you. You said <laughs> six, right, DM? It was six for you, yeah. Got it, sorry. So since I'm resistant to cold damage. You take five. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay, uh, beep, beep, bop. Okay, I've taken my five. Um, gotcha. It's your turn now? That's right. Yay! Game. I'm gonna hit him with wave. You can try. <laughs> wave, this thing clearly does not worship Persona. Wave agrees. Let's dispose of it said something about a dark lord. Oh my god. <laughs> no beans. Right. I don't like that. I don't <laughs> like that that was your response. <laughs> Another natural one with the most powerful weapon that we have. Beans. Um, okay, I'm gonna try again. Because I get my second attack, right? Yep. <laughs> Fingies crossed. 18 hits. Hey, check that out. And I'm a divine smite it. As you should. As... Guess what? It's undead. <gasps> Yay! Get wrecked, punk. <laughs> uh, you also take another nine points of cold damage when you hit it. <laughs> Get wrecked, punk. Um, Let's see. And so then I do 3d8, correct? Mm -hmm. Just add a d8 since it's undead. Plus 15. So. And then another Boom. d8. Plus 16. Nice. <laughs> yes, this radiant energy erupts from wave, and it's very impressive. Um, ah, wave. Got him. Our priest is going to take ooh. a nap 
He has 12 hit points left and is going to take five at the start of a turn. Ouchies. And um, Sacred Flame. The creature has a uh, thing happens, a cascading energy around it. It fails, takes D8 of another D8 of radiant damage. There we go. And then it's... Um, um, just want to, Serene, you're going to need to uh, to roll some con saves to see whether or not um, Shield of Faith stays up. It's true. Please roll two constitution saving It's like throws. a five foot step back. Uh, not before taking seven cold damage. Okay. Are you uh, disengaging? Nope, but you can't take a reaction. Oh. Yeah. 22 no and 18. Yay. Oh, let me just Shield of Faith stays up. I can save. Yep. Right, and then I, I attack it. Mm -mm -mm. For 18 to hit. Okay, yeah, it hits. For 8 piercing. You take 5 points of cold. Still at reach. Yes. Oh, wow. so how many? Sorry. Uh, five oh. points of cold damage. Wow. Okay, I'm um, step five foot back in then, and then do my bonus action. Oh, missed. Jesus Christ. I hate roll twenty so much. <laughs> That's me done. <laughs> it's such a pile of shit. It's unbelievable. Oh, what do you mean? it's fine. It does the job. You weren't thinking that when you did all those natural 20s as Jax the other day. It has its fair share. Speed dump. Um. Oh. Yeah. This is sad. <laughs> Sorry. Melvin. <laughs> Sorry, I need you to make another constitution saving throw. Just me? Well, and the priest. Oh, yeah, okay. That is sad. Goodbye, priest. Uh. Ooh, goodbye <laughs> me, too, probably. Uh -oh. That's a four total. Okay. Um, it's going to be 30 points of necrotic damage. Whoa. Yeah, I go down. Whoa. And the priest floats ah. up into the air. Hmm. What was that from? It was from the blast of necrotic damage. Mm -hmm. Can I have? Do I have attack of opportunity then? It was a um, a, a breath weapon. Oh, okay. Rolled that five. Uh, Melvin, please make a death saving throw. Oh, dear. What are we going to do if Melvin dies? <laughs> We're going to create a time paradox. <laughs> That'll be interesting, certainly. Uh, 14. That's a success. Yep. Nether. I've got nothing that I can help you with. I don't think Nether even sees that it happened. <laughs> Which reminds me, DM, um, I'm going to make an attack roll here because that other one would have had to have been a disadvantage because I'm blind. Oh, she's she's dying. She's not dead. Oh, good for her. Um, okay. So, uh, let's see here. So, does a 15 oh, you, hit? You have, you have no doll. Yeah, 15 just hits. All right. So, then that damage stays. So, let me roll uh, my other two Eldritch Blast attacks. <laughs> These are going to both be at... What is it to do disadvantage? Control, I think. Control doesn't seem. Control is dis disadvantage. Doesn't Are you clicked into working. the window? Otherwise, it won't display. Doesn't seem to be working. Sarayan, so, you just saw Melvin just roll be twice. overcome by an inky blast. So, 26 from one. <clears throat> 15, you said hits? Yeah. All right, so that is 10 points of force damage from the first one, and a disadvantage well again. Ooh, that's a natural one. I won't roll the second one, so the second one misses. Okay. Uh, at which point, um, Zorp Zorp will come running up 
And make another attack. 13. Hit. Okay. Uh, th uh, 13 does not hit. 13 does not hit. And then we'll <sighs> face step back and cast another um, cube of blackness over another. All right. So does, he take, uh, does he take damage from the cold? Uh, it didn't hit it. And it didn't okay. start his turn there. So no. Uh, Sarayan, you have seen Melvin be engulfed in this necrotic inky blast, and he is f now floating, helplessly, unconscious and dying. And you're muted. It's almost better that way with your <laughs> reactions. It's amazing. <laughs> Sarayan uh, hates that. Let me see. Uh, I said, sweet baby boy. I said, oh no. <laughs> um, boop, 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 boop. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, so I'm going to take Dark the Dark Horse 1975. Disengage. Sorry, bye. And I'm going to go over to to deliver aid to, to Melvin. Oh, disengage would be an action. Which yeah. mean you wouldn't have an action to, unless you have a bonus action to restore hit points. But I don't know that you do. I don't, but I'm not gonna just leave him there floating uh, in space. Okay, we'll do a little meta. I can bring him to you next round. Oh, okay. Serain gestures wildly to Nether. <laughs> we can't see you. <laughs> yeah. You gonna risk it? Risk it for the biscuit, yo. No, I'm going take to. Reactions now, I'm so going. I, yeah. I'm going to him. Okay. Sorry, I can't leave him there. Um, that opportunity is a. Let's do a. You're resistant to cold, so let's do a life draining tentacle. Ow, oh, fifteen to hit. Haha, <laughs> Miss Sucker. Okay. Did you take an attack on I'm that? Sorry, that felt really mean. I did, after I yeah. said it. Oh my gosh, Peter, no. No, 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 I meant it did, so Jade gets an attack of opportunity. I didn't mean that. Uh, oh, I thought you were saying that I was really mean to you. I was like, I'm sorry. 25. Getting another necrotic blast heading that way. 10 damage. Okay, and uh, another four points of cold damage. To Prion? Prion. Okay, so Rain, it missed you with that attack of opportunity, and you have run over to the helpless, lifeless, inert Melvin. No, can I take him in my arms? Not lifeless. <laughs> you, you may. Can you heal him? Uh, I can't yet, but I can cradle him and protect him. You, you can't heal him? Well, not because isn't it an action? It is. You didn't disengage, though. That's why it took the attack of opportunity. So you have oh, your action. Yeah. I see you guys. You learn something new every day. Sorry, I haven't been playing. <laughs> is that since... really something new? <laughs> Sean, I haven't been <laughs> Sorry, playing. I, couldn't I haven't been playing. Oh, I couldn't I resist. I'm not done. I haven't been playing since the only flavor of Doritos was nacho cheese. OK? <laughs> so excuse <Got> <laughs> me. It takes me a little more time, okay? Yeah, I, you, All right. you got it. <laughs> so, yeah, instead I am going to take my action. It comes from a place of love. I'm going to take my action to heal uh, my, my dearly beloved and not departed yet, Melvin. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm for just how many gonna. Uh, geez. Oh, geez. Um, like fifteen. Okay. Jesus. That's okay. all I have left to give. <laughs> Might want to save oh. some then. Oh. Yeah. Really. Uh, well. All right. Ten. There you go. Okay. And enough to keep, points keep, to that's keep, uh, uh, that's keep us from dying. Five exactly. people from dying. And um, but we have the healer, right? No, she's, she's dying. dying. She's also dying. Look on the screen. <laughs> she's dead at home. Okay, then fine. It's gonna be sorry, Melvin. It's gonna. I was trying to be heroic. It's gonna be eight <laughs> points. Se seven, seven points. She keeps okay. locking it down. Like you could just do one, guys. You could just do one. You could just do one. 
Just do one hit point. Oh, I'm hearing, I do have, I'm hearing I do have a, healing a little function. <laughs> whisper on the breeze saying to just do one. So it's just gonna be one. And... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting over a bad cold, but <laughs> Serene. <laughs> <laughs> into Melvin's lifeless visage. She looks at him, she shakes him, she's like, don't you die on me, you intellectual property stealing dum-dum. And then I'm gonna give him a healing point. <laughs> Melvin, you come alive being shaken by this very strong, very Whoa. emotionally aggressive <laughs> Triton. What? Serene? Nah. Uh, anyway. And the priest fails a save. Uh, any other movement Serene by just, besides just going out there? Yeah, she just shake her fist at the priest. Okay. Priest save, fails a death save and it's Prion's turn. Okay. I... Attack. Armor class 15. Hits. Taking 15 damage. Very nice. God, imagine if you guys were still vulnerable to it. Oh my god. So I take um, hit points? Uh, I one point of cold damage. Point, actually. And I tuck it again. Missed. Wow. Indeed. Be done. Uh, unfortunately, she failed her second death save by starting her turn in the next to the thing. Um. So you see her begin to freeze up and become truly lifeless. Uh, it's turn. Rolled a two on the d6. So. We got regular attacks, folks. Uh, he's going to swim up and over here. Sarayan, life draining tentacle. 11. Dang it. No, Brian, thank you. Great sword. For a natural one. Oh. But he's going to uh, reposition the tables himself have turned. right here. I get another attack of opportunity then, did I? You did, it did not move out of your range. Uh, but you attack Sarayan. Oh, uh, good point. Yep, you would. 18. It's... Oh, and you moved. You take another nine booming blade damage. Okay. And another seven. And you take nine cold damage. Damn, so... Going down. You said you went down? I'm going down. All right. In an earlier round, Melvin, with one hit point, you have emerged into a life-like state. Uh, um, and um, it is an action to take a potion of healing. Is that correct? Yes. I will take out a potion of greater healing and chug it. Okay. As an action. Any um, bonus action? I don't think so. I don't think I have a bonus action prepared, like a bonus no. action spell. So, no, I do not. So that'll be it. What you got, Nether? Uh, Nether is going to do a, another couple of Eldritch Blasts at disadvantage, because she's blind. Blind. So that's going to be a 15 and a 16. So the first wait, one wait, is wait, 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 wait. Nether's blind? I'm just kidding. I'm sorry, I gotta go. <laughs> Three points of force damage. Right. Second blast. <laughs> At disadvantage, 12 is going to miss. Yeah. Zorb Zorb's gonna run up and attack. Also, um, I reread the spell. There's another three damage from the one successful attack that Zorb Zorb has had. Okay, adding it now. Q, uh, and the attack goes. <laughs> Hitting AC 21. It's So that's going to be... Eight points of slashing damage and... Eight. Seven points of force damage. 
And then it is takes going... two points of cold damage. Two points of cold damage. Got it. And then is going to uh, face step back. <laughs> creating another cube of blackness around Nether. Okay. Who is unaware that the blackness is there because she's blind. Sarayan, at the start of your turn, you take seven cold damage. Reduce to three. And I was like, well, turn. what if I am resistant to cold damage? So it's three. Yeah. Wow, you learn something new every day. You I haven't been playing this uh, game well since 86. The priest has failed two death saves, if it matters to you. If it doesn't, that's fine. Let's save that failed priest. failed two death because, saves? Because somebody else is going down. <laughs> Nah, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so I got Mel V back up. Mm -hmm. And since I am not engaged with this dumb, dumb bubble gum in front of me, I can just swim over to the priest, right? Yes. Okay, cool. Uh, and they are poisoned. Yeah. They're not poisoned. They are dying. Oh. But Oh, yeah. that looks, so points. what's your symbol for poison? Just so. I don't know. It's oh, okay. That, it's variable. <laughs> Cool. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, okay. So then I will give them one point of healing. She's alive. I'm trying to be responsible. All right. That's your action. Anything else? Uh, Such an interesting chain. My bonus action will be nothing, I guess. Okay. Can I, can I have more than one shield up at once? Can just concentrate okay, thank on one. You, so you also need much. to make at least one constitution saving throw to see if it is still up. Oh. Uh, so. And sure, she sure, will sure, wake sure, up sure, and sure. oh my gosh, life is scary, but we've got to do a. We'll do a 17. Nice. Yay. Oh, Jesus. Freon, take 23 points of healing. Wow. 23. Nice. Good call on healing the priest. Awesome. Oh, wait. You, sorry, you gave her one point of healing? I could give her however many she needs. Well. She's going to drop at the start of her turn. Yeah. From the aura. Didn't think of that. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> no, that's how it works. So you keep her from dying, but she goes. Yeah, she, she would have died instantly. Falls unconscious again. So. Okay, sorry. but how many would it take to keep that from not happening? I mean, I can't do it it's now, It's a random obviously. roll. It's a how random many do you want to risk, Sarayan? It's random. I've got a damage number that you have to beat oh, to- Oh, beans. Uh... Oh, Tell me the number. Seven. All right, I'm gonna roll this publicly. Yes. Did it. Yay! Through the power so of friendship, she has enough she is revived. <laughs> to go and heal Prion for that much. Yay! And we'll end her turn looking desperate. Uh, Prion, you're up. Uh, <clears throat> I will attack. Oh my god, this is just. <laughs> it happens. It's clearly because of roll 20. Oh man! Man! Oh, so close. Ugh! 14, I don't know if that hits. Would, 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 would you short. have considered... Well, like, it's not, not this game. You don't do flanking in your game, do you, Peter? I don't. Yeah. Um, okay. I rolled a one. Um, oh, let's see. <laughs> Both are hard to hit. You're healing people. Um, all right. Melvin, tentacle for 23 to hit. Um, yeah, not even shield's going to save me from that. Nine points of necrotic damage. Please make a constitution saving no, throw. No, just... Um, and we'll swing at Prion, see if I can do something this time. Gosh darn it. Ah, damn. 18. Um, um, so would I got an attack of opportunity there? Yeah. You know, this reminds me of, this reminds and, me of that, that thing we did oh in gosh. Strahd. Where we all nearly died trying to get tough one. Yeah. I, I think uh, your, I failed that con save. Your max hit points are reduced by nine. Oh, okay. It indeed, drains your life. Well, Prion, it misses you. You miss it. We all go around in a cycle here. Um, and it will be Melvin's turn again. I'm up still, thankfully. 
Um, Hold a one on its breath dice. If it didn't, that would be bad. Yeah, that would be so very bad. bad. I'm rolling real dice now. Um, I'm going to... That that little sort of exploding atom thing that's next to the to the rolls, um, that it, it, it's a it's a third party that is rolling that it's 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 really randomized. Hmm. Oh God. Um. Sorry, I'm. Wait, a brilliant idea. Mental math here. That's what we need. I'm we need a brilliant idea. Yeah. Fun. I think I can get here without provoking an attack of opportunity. Has it got reach? Does yeah. it have reach? I think we have established that it does have reach. It does. You've seen it attack oh, even, at least even 15 feet then. out. I can go there. Yeah. I don't have to avoid that, that other square. Um, and then I'm going to... Uh, Radiant Fireball. Over here. <laughs> okay. So that it only hits him. A dex save? Um, dex save DC 15. Yes. I rolled a five. Yes. 26 points of radiant damage. Melvin. That'll help. <laughs> Here's the scary thing about this thing, too. So you rolled two more damage than you needed to to beat its thing. It's also technically a zombie. <laughs> and so it could have potentially gotten another whole couple rounds. But mm -hmm. since you radiant fireballed yes. it, it is up oh to you God. to describe how you dispatch job sure. this So I, uh, I point my quill, my, my little spectral quill, and a beam of light shoots out of it and explodes like a sun underwater just off the way here. Um, and it's just a blindingly bright white light. Never. I could see. I can't see anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, good job, everyone. Um, that was a difficult fight, but just a, a cool one. It was a good idea and clutch to keep them busy and not get hurt by extra necrotic damage. All of very well played on your guys' part. So congratulations. Um, digging around, the bodies will have started to animate um, by this energy. Again, ready to pillage the um, uh, the island and pull back any corpses to just, again, sort of create this snowballing mass of undead nautical soldiers um but stopping it at the root means it will happen or you will learn a bit about this pirate himself um who was um his last name was actually tamarout the name of the ship uh Sirgal tamarout and he was a worshiper of orcas and um, he made a deal as he was being smote from the ocean um or by the uh smote by the waves of Volker and um, happened to fall in a convenient location where he was able to uh, unleash this sort of mysterious passage to you don't really know where if it's transdimensional or what but there was immense unstoppable evil emanating from it but no longer it is sealed you will also find, it. you guys will find a plus one besides the items you found um, you will get a charm of plant communication um, from the druid as well. Uh, you get that folding boat, immovable rod. Um, you will get a, um, a, what's it called? A plus one breastplate as well, which was worn originally by the, um, prior in this place, who was a devout worship. Is the, um, the charm of plant communication, does that require attunement? Hey, whoever's hanging out with us too, we're about to do a giveaway. Charm of Plant Command. It is rare and it's 
plant command, charm of plant command, and it requires yes. attunement, yes. Um, but yes, um, we're going to do a giveaway, exclamation point giveaway, do it, do it, do it, I'll be right back.